Ooh, what's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm posting on Instagram. And this is the Nerdy. The Wordy. The Book Club. Coming at you live this Friday, January 25th, 26th morning. Oh, boy. Clarus didn't realize there was a countdown on screen for when we were going to start, so. Well, I did, but I thought I, you would, like, you know, I was literally about to hit send, and you were like, nah, I'm going to start it anyway. It said three, two, one, and we are professionals. Because we're always on time. We are the most on time. Always. Like every streamer ever, we start mm -hmm. on time. Yes, exactly. Talcamore Tal Althor says, bangs. 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 Then bangs Got be banging. Got my hair did. <laughs> bangs be banging, baby. See, they just like this. I can't have, like, true bangs because of my calic. Like, if you look at me from the side, there's, like, parts of the hair that go, like, whew, because it tries to, like, stick up in the air. But uh, I can have what? some, like, light bangage. <laughs> it's true. You can only handle light bangage. Yes. Ba um, bankage. <laughs> bankage. Good morning, everybody. This is the full book recap for The Final Empire, a book about empires that were final. Um, but well, we don't know. They might there do will be another a, there, empire. Yeah, there might be an empire they after might, this one. Yeah, or I'm, I'm monarchy. They have a king, so. Which does not preclude them from being an empire. Well, so, okay, so then what is an empire? Uh, an em Who, does an empire have an emperor? No. Okay. Not necessarily. Uh, an empire uh, is just a I guess you can nation. be a corporate empire. There are many forms of empire. It basically just means that you have taken over other land and or you're other, conquered. Essentially, you got conquered. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got gotcha. it. An empire is an amalgamation of states or corporations into one larger state or corporation. So, like uh, Microsoft. Yes, yes, or Apple, or <laughs> most companies nowadays. Honestly, there are very few companies left that aren't like that. Fair. Uh, and I feel uh, like everyone's been bought out. You know, the British Empire had a monarch, not an emperor. True. King George wasn't an emperor, but he you was a monarch. True. You make, of an you empire. make good points. Yeah. Uh, empires are typically not good. Mm. I don't know what just happened, but that splashed me in the face. <laughs> good? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Uh, so, yeah, we finished a Mistborn. How are you feeling about the Cosmere this uh, early on? You know, it was hard not to pick up the next book and start reading it. So I think that's a good sign. Yeah. I was like, I just want to read the next book. Yeah. Um, God, <laughs> we might stop streaming this on Twitch. Why? Because people on Twitch are like, hello? Are you not going to say hello back? This is in the talk shows and podcasts. Like, I, I feel like people just, I, I don't get it. I really Twitch don't understand. Twitch has a different culture than YouTube does. And people think that that culture carries over to like all categories for Which sure. Which it doesn't. No, I, it I, I know. It just doesn't. I'm sorry, Exalted Clown. I'm not trying to make a like, example out of you. I just am like, it's it's every single time we go live now, and I just don't understand. But it doesn't matter. Uh, we're live to talk about the final empire. Let's do it. And we're going to talk about it right after this sponsor break. Sponsor break. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by MistyMountainGaming.com. MistyMountainGaming.com. Uh, on MistyMountainGaming.com, you can buy all the accoutrement necessary to the playing of the tabletop RPG games. Yes. Uh, that is a website that makes fantastic dice. They make DM screens. They make all sorts of things. And they are only made possible by people like you. Because if you don't buy it, they can't what? sell it. And we, like we want them to fail miserably as a business. So we have a secret for you. You can pay them less money for your product. Uh, and you can help us bring down MistyMountainGaming.com. Bring them to their knees. Uh, and by giving you 15% off. By giving you a discount. Uh, if you want, you can use code NerdyNightly15. Uh, and you can stick it to the man yeah. over at MistyMountainGaming.com. Fight capitalism by participating. Stick it to Jim by using NerdyNightly15. I don't know who Jim is. But you can stick it to him you by using who you are. NerdyNightly15. Um, and uh, you can uh, then... Uh, yeah, you can... Get a stuff. discount. I don't know. Yes, you can. Great ad. Capitalism. Yeah. Anyways, stick stick it to the man by using a discount to buy their product. Stick it to the man. All it's right, we're going with a little a school of rock. Yeah, that's a reference for very few people. Well, no, is no, that's not in the movie. I was gonna say, it's for very few people because it's the musical. But if it's in the movie, I feel like a lot of people saw that movie. I don't think it's in the movie. I don't think it's in the movie either. It's, yeah. 
anyways, guys, we have two things on the schedule for today. Two things on the schedule for today. So, um, do you want questions first, or do you want my fan casting PowerPoint presentation first? Uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, yeah. But before that, as always, uh, we have Dragonlance tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are not following the Roleplay Relay uh, socials, um, the live stream... Nailed it. The live stream goes up on Nerdy Nightly, but all the fun shorts, moments, level ups, that kind of thing, that all goes on the Roleplay Relay YouTube channel. So please follow that. We're also on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, I just realized I have to, I have to edit that. Oh, the level three level yeah. ups. Uh, the level three level ups will be on the channel today. I forgot we filmed that. I love that for us. So the question of the day is... It could go up at 11 a.m. tomorrow, like two hours before. Um, mm -hmm. or no, 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 I'll put it up today. Okay. It takes, I, don't it'll we take have a video going up today? On the Roleplay Relay channel? Nothing. Oh, fair, 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 fair. We have so videos on matter. this channel fucking every day. Nailed it! Y'all, but just, but just, the, just for my sanity, does anyone want to watch reactions to Halo? <laughs> does anyone care? I'm kind of looking at the schedule and like, should I even cover it? No. Windings. I say no. Okay, it looks like PowerPoint is winning. So we're going to start with Clarus's is PowerPoint it? presentation. Okay. I, I mean, the Rock, only... paper, scissors. I only see PowerPoint. No one's saying questions first. So. That's fair, that's fair, that's fair. Uh, all right. No, Chad says no. What? Pass. No. No one's going to watch it. No one's going to... But guys, what if I put myself through it so that you don't have to? Here's the thing. We could just watch it and then rip it apart afterwards in a video. But it might not be worth ripping apart. You are assuming you are making assumptions. Like, what are your assumptions based on? Season one. Yeah, but they're, it's a different team. It's a complete, like, they literally fired everybody. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not like... You know what like I mean? It's... it's start, like, the thing is, they can't start over. If they were like, everything that we established in season one actually is wrong, that, like... No, I don't know. Yeah. I just think that you're... I think that you are being too hard on a group of people you have seen no work from. Because other people did work that you don't like. Yeah. Because it's called <laughs> Halo. If you're like... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What you could have done yeah. if you wanted to establish it... Away from the first season of Halo, yeah. is you could have called it Halo Reach. Sure, one of the games, like a Halo colon something. The book that this season is based on. Sure, sure, sure. But that's what I mean. You could have called it Halo something else. So there's not Halo season two, and people are like, oh, but I didn't like season one, so why would I watch season this two? This is a book club. Uh, Halo Reach, it, yeah, really good book. book. Books. It's no, it, it is. It is a very, it is a very sad but very good book. Um, right, love that for me. So then, Clarus, you're going to take it away from here. We're just going to give me two seconds here to um, boop this, and then I'm going to boop this. Should I do a baby book club on Halo? Uh, yes, you should. Oh, guys, also, um, oh, before we get into it, yeah, I'm, I'm really crushing it today. Uh, just so you are all aware, uh, on Monday, I have an interview today uh, with an author about her new book. Uh, that interview is going to go live on Monday because her book comes out on Tuesday. So uh, if you would like to support the channel uh, and support uh, authors and us getting... Ba basically what happened is Penguin Random House reached out and was like, we would like for you to interview this author. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. I've never been emailed directly by Penguin Random House before. Uh, and so this it is this author's first... Uh, book in the fiction space. They're a mm -hmm. nonfiction bestseller. Mm -hmm. And uh, so please check out that interview. Help me get that yeah. out there so that maybe Penguin Random House will let me interview other authors. Yeah. And then maybe eventually Brandon Sanderson will talk to me. Yeah, guys, if this one does well, it is, uh, you know, it's definitely far away from Brandon Sanderson, but it's one step closer. We're, we're, we're working our way towards Brando Sando. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that we're going to call those, um, or book clubs that we do separately, because I'm going to do like a Percy Jackson book club by myself. We're going to call those baby book clubs, uh, and they will be part of the podcast feed and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, the first baby book club is Monday, uh, and that is going to be an interview with an author about a book that I don't know if I'm allowed to say much yet. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll drop on Monday. It'll be a surprise. Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends, it is time for the first segment of today's podcast that isn't just ads or us talking about ourselves or the Halo TV show. Mm -hmm. It is Clarus's PowerPoint. 
I made a PowerPoint. Clarice will now be making a PowerPoint in every full book recap That's, moving forward. Nope. She is committed to it. No. Nope. They will get longer and more elaborate nope. with special effects and editing. Didn't say that. Clarice is committing to work very hard Didn't to bring you PowerPoints till the end of time. I, nope. Clarice, mm -hmm. will you please bring your first Wrong. of many PowerPoints, the Mistborn casting for the final Empire movie coming to... Uh, Disney Plus. Can I get some hype in chat? Sorry, podcast listeners. Uh, this is going to be slightly less fun if you're only listening because I did put pictures in here. Um, and, you know, I'm I'm very bad with names. So hopefully I, there's a few that I'm like genuinely worried that I might fuck up real bad. Don't judge me, okay? Just press that button when you're ready. Love it. Mistborn casting. For fun only. This is not for legal purposes. No, nope, this, this is the actual casting for Disney Plus's Straight to streaming Mistborn television Actually, series. Actually, yeah, I talked to Brandon Sanderson, mm -hmm. and I was like, look, I know you have infinite money, so we're just going to go with an all-star cast for every single role. And he was like, yes, love it. Great. So, Clark, I, mean, I, I have to ask to start, why this font? It was the one that came with Google Slides. I did not, <laughs> did not change the font. Okay. Like, didn't touch it. Okay. I did very minimal work for this because I made it at 11 p.m. last night. What is the what is the meaning of the green on the sides? What is the color? That was the that was the layout <laughs> that 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 Google Slides gave me. So none of this was intentional. This was this was just like. Oh, what sorry, was not there? Google Slides. Canva. I picked a thing in Canva and I made it in Canva and then I put it on Google Slides. I I did very minimal work. For those of you on Canva TikTok, uh, my wife is one of you. She just doesn't post about it on TikTok. I didn't know Canva had an entire. Oh, there's a side whole there's a whole thing about women obsessed with Canva. Yeah. There's a whole side of TikTok just being like, I don't get it, but these women are crazy, um, and those people I are mean, wrong. It's fun. Yeah. It, it matches my tr green guys. The theme was green. I didn't mean for that to happen, but here we are. Match my hat. Number one, our main character. Well, that didn't work. Sorry. Is Vin played by Millie Alcock. Guys, if you have not seen House of the Dragon, you are missing out because this 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 woman is fucking incredible. Um This is dependent on her not being the new Supergirl. She yeah. might be busy in James Gunn's She universe, might be but... busy, but you know, it's fine. She can film two shows at once because this is coming out very soon. Happening ASAP. Um, uh, for the podcast listeners, we have three photos of Millie Alcock. Yes. Uh, one of them, uh, she looks homeless and, uh... She looks like a normal girl! No, she looks, she looks like she's in a movie about, like, a girl who's, like, surviving on the street. Why? Because Be of the color grading? Yeah. Okay. It has nothing to do with Vin, it absolutely... But, like, her hair is clean, she's got earrings in, her sweater is nice and knit. It just, it looks color graded like an Oscar, it looks like one of those Oscar pictures where you're like we're trying really hard for this to be sad blue is like if that's homeless what the fuck do i look like exactly oh no no it is not millie alcock that looks homeless it it looks like a movie it looks like a shot from a movie where she's playing a homeless character you know what i mean sure 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 but she doesn't actually look homeless and you're like i don't buy it you can't look homeless well, if homeless you, like... Does, homeless isn't a look. I'm, I'm talking about, like, the film it looks like she's from. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so, to me, it looks I'm like saying, a sad school. The the other reason why I'm saying that is because that is Vin at the beginning of the movie. Fair. Like, so we have Vin at the beginning of the movie when yeah. she's, like, a homeless thief character. And then we have her... And then we have Vela. At the ball. That's what I... I was trying to get there, and you guys... You didn't let me, like, get through my whole vision before you jumped in. <laughs> I was like, that sweater looks really nice. I don't know what you're trying to say. I'm try I was trying to build out a narrative for the audio gotcha, listeners gotcha. about how we have like Vin on the right and then we have like Valette on the left here. Well, that is what I was going for, so yes. I appreciate that that you saw I that. Was, I I was trying to make, bring your vision to life and you were like, "No, she doesn't." <laughs> I love how different it looks on our monitors. Um anyways, uh Millie Alcock will be playing uh Vin slash Valette. Uh, guys, this this girl can fucking act and I think she can do the like Cold, reserved, I don't trust anybody kind of vibe, mm -hmm. but also the the party vibe of like, I'm just a sweet, innocent girl from the countryside and I don't know how to play your games, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think she could crush it. Um, and I, I think I think chat is mostly agreeing with, chat, I need your, your input, guys. This is supposed to like spark debate. I want rage on a Friday morning, okay? There's no debate. People are like, yeah, that, that works. I know. I, Although I do, I, I do like Daphne Keene. I think um, Daphne Keene would also be a great Vin. Who is that? Uh, have you seen Logan? Yes. Yeah, she's the, she's X twenty three. I have not seen her since that movie. So 
I don't even know. Like yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, we we love someone who can do action. Ta- Talika sure. Moral Thor says it's not The Rock, so I don't like it. The Rock, The Rock as everybody. All right, next slide. We have uh, Kelsey, or played by Donald Glover. Interesting choice. Um, I I think he has the charisma like I've almost never seen before on film. Everybody loves this guy. All the characters that he plays are like just you're like yes, I I want to follow you. I will do anything for you. And uh, I think he can pull off the like scruffy look as well as the clean shaven look. I I didn't pull a totally clean shaven photo. This one's got like a five o'clock shadow, but like he rocks. He rocks it. You know. You know. Yeah, I'm I'm in for this. Oh, Daphne was in His Dark Material. We never watched that. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, is he related to Danny Glover? He is not. Oh, yeah. cool. I don't know who that is. Okay, uh, but now I want to see Marsh. Okay, Marsh. Okay. Marsh will be played by... Why is this not centered? Uh, Lenny Kravitz. I, I didn't make it. I, I don't know why it's there. Uh, don't worry. I know Marsh is cut off, but it's fine. You can imagine it. So we would have Donald Glover and Lenny Kravitz playing brothers... Uh, I feel like Lenny Kravitz does the, like, stone face, cold, like, uh, can, can, like, I don't care about you. Yeah, it has I'm that sorry. soft, softy inside that you just, you just know is there. He's just been burned. So what do you think of my pairing of Donald Glover and Lenny Kravitz? Um, I mean, look, as long as Lenny Kravitz can keep his pants together, uh, I think that <laughs> they're going to be fine on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I definitely think you have uh, a lot of star power. Um, oh, I said unlimited budget, and Brandon I, Sanderson said yes. I almost think Lenny Kravitz might be too charismatic. Like he's supposed to be okay. sort of a foil to Donald Glover, and I think you've almost you've almost just cast like two Kelsiers. And I wonder. I, I think it would be a challenge for Lenny Kravitz to like turn down his star power a little bit. To turn turn off the well, charisma. Well, because he's, he's yeah. supposed to be he's supposed to be unsettling he's an to Vin. True. You know what I mean? Like True. he's supposed to be a little bit like. But, like, you could totally see him as a Steel Inquisitor, you know? No, not really. really? I, I made, yeah, I could see him, like, in the costume, but, like, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's an interesting... I, I It's not oftentimes where I'm, like, he's almost too charming for that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's supposed to be the thing that he's not good at. Right. You know? Yeah. But but I would love to see Leonard Kravitz take the take on the challenge it would be, of it. Yeah, challenge for this brilliant actor, you know? It was just... It, yeah, it's an interesting... Um, it's an interesting idea. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh, uh, um, uh, Casey Hammer says, I think uh, Renee Jean Page would be an interesting Marsh, but that might just be purely based on the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Absolutely. Oh, he's so good. Honestly. D- Damon says uh, Yaya Abdul Mateen for Marsh. I feel like that's wasting Yaya unless Marsh is like really big in the next few movies. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be like <clears throat> the lead, you know what I mean? Yaya Abdul Mateen is just most out there. Next up, we have Breeze as Jude Law. Because uh, I think I, I think hoity toity Brit when I hear Breeze talk in the audiobook. Uh, so I feel like I feel like he's yeah <laughs> yeah okay. I do like that you <laughs> I, you keep bringing up what I would consider to be Kelsier types for everybody. Really? Well, Breeze is supposed to be like portly and sort of a, a like a lout, and I I don't know that I get the like you know he just feels to me like wants to be high society and lives like high society even though he's a ska you know mm-hmm. no I ours that. is on my side <laughs> i i love him as an actor i just a breeze to me is, especially because he's supposed to be sort of um a, a, a thicker gentleman and has has just sort I of a like about that honestly didn't even think about it so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like. I, I get the vibe. I understand where you're going with the vibe. Yeah. Right. Okay. All yeah. Right. I was thinking. To me, more, I saw um, that mustache, and I was like, Breeze. I was thinking Stephen Fry. Who is? Um. Isn't he very old? Like, not to be like. I mean, he's uh, he's definitely older, but Danny DeVito would be an amazing Breeze. I know Fry is too old, but that like when I think of Breeze, the vibe. Oh. Yeah, the no, vibe no. in my head is Stephen Fry and Jude Law is daddy. <laughs> you know what Jude I mean? Jude Law is daddy, but like I, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Stephen Fry doesn't work for me, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, no says Breeze. I see is Jack Black. Fuck everything else. Get Jack Black. Um, I want the seat of Jack Black in a room, being like soothers, soothe. Oh my god. 
I You've got to sue them all. I hate that. All right. Hammond will be played by Florence Pugh. I already said that last week. Yes. And uh, I, I, I need no evidence. I need no evidence other than Florence Pugh. I gotta, I gotta know more about this haircut in the middle photo here. Yeah, right. The short. What is that from? I have no clue. But I saw that and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Florence Pugh always looks like she is uh, has a plan to attack you when she's looking at. Like, exactly. She's always like thirty percent ready to just take you out. Exactly. And um, Florence Pugh can do mm-hmm. the action. You know, like she's already there for that. She's like. She's, like, physically, like, intimidating. I'm like, okay, like, I wouldn't fuck around with you, you know? She's she's a pure I'm for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just love her. And basically, I, I only put people that I like in this slideshow. Cause that's it's true. For me. Um, and because Cars only remembers, like, 12 actors. That's also true. I had to do so much Googling to be like, what shows have I seen? List of actors, age blank blank. Like, I was like, yeah, anyways. Uh, Dachshund will be played by Diego Luna. I like this casting a lot. Thank you. I thought you might. Um, I, I think that this is fantastic. I think... Uh, Thank you. Guys, I got a fantastic. Let's go. Th- this this might be the most inspired choice so far, just because he is really good at playing quiet and unassuming charm. Yes. In a way that I think would really work for the character. Yes. Um, And, mm-hmm. you know, he, he, he doesn't... It's sort, of, it's sort of the opposite of Lenny Kravitz, right? Where, like, mm-hmm. Lenny Kravitz, to me, stands out too much to play Marsh. This mm-hmm. Diego Luna is really good at saving his standout moments for when his character needs it in films. Yes, uh, And I think sure. that he would crush this part. And I think he would be really good at playing the, like, I have to keep everybody in line and together and worry about the back, like, backside of, mm-hmm. of all of the plans. Because somebody's got to, you know? Like, he's, yeah, I... I this one was easy for me. I was like, I saw like a photo and I was like, yeah, no, you know what? I'm in. Based on the way we're casting things nowadays, though, mm-hmm. it would be Diego Luna as Marsh and Pedro Pascal as Kelsier. Oh my God. That would be the actual casting of the movie. <laughs> yeah, I could, you know what? I could see that. I could see that. Um, Les the Warnes is young Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> Because oh, I was like, I could, Tom Hiddleston's no, like I 45. I know. I was like, you know what? I need somebody who's like kind of like lanky and like awkward looking that isn't... You couldn't think of anyone under the age of 40? No, I couldn't. I tried. Guys, I tried so hard and I couldn't come up with it. This one was the hardest. But look at these photos. Look at these photos and tell me that he's like trying to give Vin a handkerchief and can't and runs away. Like, come on. Come on. Wow. Um... <laughs> Time travel is within budget. I said unlimited, guys. Less de- okay, no. On every level, this is this is not. This good. was the one that I couldn't. On, I on couldn't like come every up single level, this is bad. Why? He is six foot three. Yeah. I have stood. Less the is like tall and I lanky. have stood next to Tom Hiddleston uh-huh. in one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. I know. I'm aware. And he is t- way too much man. What do you mean? He is, he is like a big he's dude. He's limmy. No, he's, he's just big. Like, he, like, the, he, this is, this is such bad. Well, I've never seen him in person, so, uh, I don't know what to say. Yeah, Tom this, Holland, Tom Holland would be so funny. That was the person that I was thinking of, but I was like, no. And then I was like Googling, I was like, actors under like 25, because I was like, I want him to be like young, young. And then I was like, I can't find anybody. Everyone else looks like. Too pretty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not that he's not pretty. I don't know. I'm trying Guys, to think- it's fine. This is the one I'm least proud of. It's fine. Oh. Then Timothy Chalamet was like such an obvious answer, and I don't love Timothy Chalamet, so I was like, no, I'm not going to put him in my slideshow. It's not going to happen. I love that you're like, I didn't want obvious answers, but you put Jude Law's breeze. You didn't. You, what do you mean obvious answers? You were like, mm, I don't know if I buy that. <laughs> Anyways, Clubs is uh, West Chatham. That Obviously. photo on the right is a lot. The st- his eyes. His blue steel. Th- like yeah, that's what I mean. Like I prefer West Chatham with the beard. Like left West Chatham is just t- t- so hot. Yeah. But the like the the into the camera look over here is something else. Yeah, yeah. His eyes are so green. I know he's. And here's the thing. I kind of go with the photo with the beard more. Yeah. Because I think that that's more clubs. I'm he's like rough and gruff, but he is. He is like supposed to be a um like what's the word what's the word not a contractor a like uh 
a person who tradesman. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to be a tradesman, you know. Um, so uh, I was like, yeah, he's he's you know, West Chatham's a little like. Mm, large um but uh, i think he could pull off the gruffness of clubs very well and um yeden is james marsden <laughs> because he always gets snubbed in everything <laughs> come on I, I just i come on i don't some of these i like Come on. I, you're not getting, you're you're just putting famous people in it. That That's I what don't I said, think, unlimited budget. How I, am no, I but supposed I don't to think find the a not right. famous person? I know, I just, I mean that, like, I don't feel like the vibes, like, I, even like West Chatham, I love West Chatham. Uh-huh. Isn't Clubs, like, the oldest one? Is he the oldest? I didn't think so. I don't know about this I for you. I thought, Eden. like, I, I pictured Breeze Eden as being oldest. more like, um, I, I, like, I would have cast, like, Littlefinger from Game of Thrones. For who? For Eden. Yeah, I guess no. James he's Marsden too is smar- so hot. He's, yes, but he always gets screwed over in everything that he does. He never gets it, and Yeden doesn't get it. You know what I mean? I don't know what you mean. He fucks up so bad, and he never gets the girl. It's just like his destiny to fail at every role. That you he have plays seen at. one X Men movie, and you're like no, the whole thing no, about James Enchanted. Marsden. Enchanted. He gets the girl. He gets the other girl. He gets the better girl. <laughs> You say, I'm sorry, over Amy Adams? Really? Over, really? Over Amy Adams, who is going to live the rest of her life trying to figure out how to be an adult in a world she doesn't understand whatsoever and is going to be a constant everyday nightmare? Sounds like yes, an adventure. Yes, fucking Sounds like I an adventure. I will take the capable, intelligent, working woman with a degree and a fucking job over a woman who sings at over parents Amy to help Adams. them to clean our fucking bathroom. How dare yes. you? If I have a choice between Amy Adams and Adina Men. How dare you? You say Amy Adams as if the other woman in this situation is also the isn't other guy in the notebook. Adina motherfucking Menzel. Whatever, we're moving on. Uh, no, 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 we're not. No, we're not. You're, you you want to sit here and say mm-hmm. that there is no mm-hmm. world where Adina Menzel is an option next to Amy Adams? Amy Adams is superior. Wow. I'm sorry. She has wow. She's Babe, perfect. Have you heard The Wizard and I? Yes. Yes, I have. I get hard to that song. Here's the thing. I already have Adele you Dazeem. singing all the time. No, I'm training you lungs. out for her. You don't get Adina Menzel. I get Adina Menzel. You get nobody. Okay, if I get Amy Adams, I don't see how this no, is but, but, bad No, but no, no. It anyway. isn't Amy Adams. It isn't Amy Adams. It is an infantilized child in a woman's body who knows nothing about the world. She learns... I don't want to teach her. She doesn't need to be taught. She's figuring shit out on her own. Uh, Amy Adams comes she from a sees world, the world where, as a like, beautiful, wonderful place. Sex and doesn't I exist, that. and I don't need to date a virgin. I'm Amy, too old. Amy Adams is. <laughs> I am too old to date virgins. Okay, I just can't do it. Uh, how James dare Ross you. says, "Sexy born yesterday" trope. Absolutely, she's a sexy baby, and I don't need a sexy baby. She's I need not a fucking baby. woman. No, sexy how babies. A sexy baby is a trope. It, it's it's um. It's a narrative trope that is very common now where you have, like, Poor Things, the new Emma Stone movie is apparently one. Uh, the, where the, she's literally a baby. Where you are an adult, but she's you have literally the... literally a baby, though. Right, but Amy Adams is functionally the same thing. Like, she treats the world... How dare. No, 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 but in that, in that movie, that's what she is. She is a adult woman with adult body and sexuality, but without any of the context or ability to understand what the meaning behind any of it is. And so, so a Christian. No. <laughs> no. No sex till marriage. No, no, it's not. It's not about decisions. It's about like knowledge. It's about like their world experience. I mean, I think she knows what sex is. She gets pretty like turned on. Like her. Pt. And- Pt. I am not slandering Amy Adams at all. I am saying that I do not want to date her character from Enchanted. We're not talking about the real people. The real people are wonderful. <laughs> I've met Amy Adams. She is a wonderful, lovely human being, and we had a great day walking across the street back and forth together, talking about um, 
she was about to do Into the Woods in the park. And we literally had to just walk the across the street over and over and over again. And we chatted like, all day. We gotta fill the time. Amy Adams was lovely. And she's a great person. I am not talking about the real Amy Adams. I'm pretty sure she's married. I, that's, I, you know, like, the, I'm saying that her character in Enchanted is a child mentally. And I want an adult woman. That is the comparison we're making. All right. We're not talking about real people here. Moving on. Chanel Ariel. Uh, as Stephanie... This is great Sue, I Shoe. think Shoe, okay, is how you pronounce it. Um, can do all her own action stuff. Ooh, actually, Javier Bardemis clubs would be good, too. I don't Me know who that is. What? <laughs> no, it's just hilarious. Uh, Stephanie Shoe. <laughs> yeah. This... I love that you're like, don't know Javier Bardem, but Stephanie Shoe. Everything, everywhere, all at once is iconic and perfect in every way, and she's amazing. No, it's great. It's great casting. I want her in more stuff. Honestly, she she's a little too old to be Vin, but I, I think that she Vin? would also be good as Vin. No, Shan. Oh, she, you you think she would be? Gotcha. I think she's too old to play Vin, but I think that she would she she would yeah. be fun in that character. That yeah, that would be fun. I could see that. Yeah. I just like that she's a bit like she's like she's got presence. And oh yeah, she's no, I not think it's a, great. you know she's not like. Um, like, at the ball, they, like, make fun of Vin for being too, like, scrawny, and mm-hmm. she's like, nah, I'm a woman, you know what I mean? So, um, yes, I, this one is must, I'm sorry, we're not budging on this one. Uh, Brandon Sanderson has given me his blessing. <laughs> I just want to see her and Millie Alcock fight in the air in, like, flappy cloaks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm glad that we have no objections to this one. <laughs> It's hard to object to it. She's, she was so good in everything ever all at once. And I think everyone is just kind of waiting for her next big thing. All right. I don't know how you're going to feel about this one. Ellen Venture. Who is this? This is Zorro from One Piece Live Action. Oh, my God. Right? He looks uh, so different with hair. I know. That isn't, like, short um, and green. Makinumeida, I think is how you pronounce that. Huh. Um, he, I think he could play nerdy really well. Look, I know he's hot. I know. I don't. I, think I know. He's, honestly, no. I think no. he's too jacked. Too jacked? Well, he's you. You kind of well, picked like Muscles McGee over here. He's definitely hot. He's like very attractive, but he's also he's also like how tall is he? I, I don't know. I just pictured. Didn't do any I research. pictured Ellen Venture as not being Guys, like. Didn't do any research for this. I think he's the right age, though, and I think he has that, like, off-put... He can do that off-putting vibe very well. I'm, I'm not... I'm really not against it at all. <laughs> thank I think you, he's, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, th- I genuinely think he's wonderful in One Piece. Oh, he's fantastic. He might be my favorite part of One Piece. But he only has, like, 12 lines in 8 episodes, and Ellen talks a lot. So I, 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 I haven't seen him talk a lot. So I would I would love to see it just so that I could watch him talk more and see like how he handles more dialogue. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, but I, I I I like the choice. I think like if he crushes the audition, I'm 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 in. You'd cast him? Okay, thank you. Because I just want to see more of him. I think right now it's it's hard to say no to him, right? Like One uh-huh. Piece is one of the biggest television shows of last year. It was a huge success. We Everyone loved it. was really complimentary of him. I, I I think that this would be a really strong choice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Which means that his daddy would be Daniel Day Kim. <laughs> Because I saw the trailer for Avatar: The Last Bender. Yeah, Bender, yeah, no, I, I see where this is coming I, from. I, he's got to be. I do there love somewhere. that your casting is always what has Cars watched in the last thirty days. Yeah, no, that uh, guys, my memory doesn't go past thirty days, so I, I'm very limited by what I have seen recently. Um, wow, yeah, I. <sighs> Chat likes it. I. I'm into it. I, I think this is a strong choice. I, right? I like the idea. You, like you seem to have made it like the great houses. Uh, have like a uh, sort of Asian vibe that I'm into. Oh, I didn't even. Yeah, with yes. the Alarials and the. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm 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 really into it. I, I think <laughs> I this is strong choices. <laughs> I mean, he is playing Ozai, so yes. Um, but uh, yeah, and I think age like he's age appropriate for mm-hmm. Ellen. Um, I think they would play off it's, each one another really well. But yeah, it's it's interesting. Just that I feel like he is almost. It would depend on how much Lord Venture is in future movies. I said unlimited budget, and I can only you know cast I mean? stars. Yeah. Here's the thing. If I could just, hold he's, he's auditions really to find people that weren't big, I would do that. But I don't know people who aren't big because mm-hmm. I haven't seen them in the show. Sure. <laughs> so I am limited by stars, and uh, Brandy Sandy's giving He just only has approval. like three scenes, really, so I yeah. don't know. Scafandi, think about Super Chat. Yay, thank you. I'll be here three to five. 
Wave Kings. No, we'll get to we'll probably get to Wave Kings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this year I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah. read we'll read Wave Kings by the end of the year. Twenty twenty four. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, thank you for that super chat. I'm gonna pretend that it's for my casting. Thank you. We'll probably do Wave Kings over the summer. I think. Uh, Cliss will be played by Cat Dennings. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, right? She's too old now. Yeah, but don't worry about um, that. Don't worry about that. We like already 16, have a time machine, but, uh, so it's Other fine. than that, I'm, I am into it. If anyone could soothe me, it's Kat Dennings. No, she's not a soother. She's the, she's the one who, like, is like, oh, right, right, right. oh I'm totally the gossip, and then is like, fuck you, right. bitch, I know all your secrets. You know what I mean? She's the political soother. Um, no, I'm very into this. Mm-hmm. I'm very into this middle photo. I don't know what that is, but the boobs would be boobin. And her I'm boobs always it. be boobin. I know. I'm, Chad Dennings I'm cannot avoid the boobage. Um, yeah. No, I'm I'm into it. I, I like this casting. I I approve. Thank you. Yeah, I I, I give my stamp of approval on this one. Uh, Renew would be played by Adam Driver. Because I don't know Absolutely what Renew not. is, and so I was like, the Adam Driver can play a nobleman. Oh, you mean he plays the Kandra and he yeah. like morphs into everybody? He is the Mist Wraith. Okay. He's the Mist Wraith. If he's just renewed, I, I, I don't like this. But um, if he is the Mist Wraith, I think I could get behind it. Yeah, he's the Mist Wraith. It's fine. Um, Look at him. He could wear a suit. He could absorb dead bodies. Who yeah. knows? Who yeah, knows? Yeah, you've once, you've once more pulled, like, the most famous person to be, like, the smallest part. I'm only working with famous people here, okay? I honestly think he would actually be a really good Seized. Okay, well, I think Seized might be next is Keanu Reeves. Interesting. Yeah. I thought you might like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. I do. Thank you. I do like that. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, this vibe works for me. Okay. I, I, this one I'm actually I realizing with... right now that I think that Adam Driver and Keanu Reeves might be the same person. Same vibe. Same vibe. Have they been in a room together? Same actor, different generation. Can anyone confirm? <laughs> I Look, here's the thing. Keanu Reeves can do all the action for Seizid. He's, like, got this, like, mysterious vibe about him. But, like, mm-hmm. he's, like, he's kind eyes. You know what I mean? You're, like, you mean well. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, I, he's he's my say Zed for sure. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. Great. Love I that. just like Keanu Reeves and things. Fair. Uh, Mare would be Maisie Williams. Um, What? Okay. What? Yeah, I'm wrapping my head around it. She's, like, 30. And, like. She's 30? <laughs> yeah. No, she's, she's not. Yeah. No, there's no way. Yeah, babe. Yeah, we grew up with her. I, I, we did not grow up with her. She was significantly Bitch. younger than me. Or, I, maybe you. She's 26. Is she? Oh, yes. I thought she was like... I she's she not was my older age. than you. I thought she was my age, which is why I cast her. So she's like a little <laughs> bit like, young. there's no fucking way. She's a little bit young, but May, uh, Mare would only really be in flashbacks anyways. Mm-hmm. So it'd be like young Kelsier and young Mare. And I think that she's got that like... Um, she, like her with like beautiful long dark hair. I mean, she only died three years ago, so it depends on how old Kelsier is. Kelsier's supposed to be like what thirty five, so which is why I thought if she was thirty, then it would work. Is he thirty five? I thought Kelsier was like between thirty and forty. How old is Donald Glover? Uh, actually, I don't know, guys. I didn't do any research for this. Forty. Okay, yeah, it's not like the worst, but it's not great. It's not great. You know what? I take it back. No, I, I like the casting. I think she'd be fun. I also think that, like, There was pairing... definitely a time when she was probably the number one fan cast for Ben. Yeah, that's fair. I just thought pairing the two Game of Thrones yeah. actors as, the, like, the almost mother-daughter figure that never got to meet was uh, was fun. But, uh, yeah. Oh, cute. I like that. It's, it, yeah. It's... It, it's yeah. It would take some. It would take some work. It would take some work. Um, I think we have. Oh yes, the Lord Ruler, uh, would be played by uh, Fabian Frankel from House of the Dragon. Because hmm. he's he 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 can play an asshole. You know what I mean. But also, he's described as being like really hot when he's young, hot with like dark hair. Yeah. Um, and I thought that uh, I thought he could be the Lord Ruler. Yeah, I I, th- I like this because you're you're th- see this is the level of fame for a character like this who you want someone who's got a little bit of star power but is going to be in your movie for two scenes mm-hmm. and that's fine because yeah. the Lord Ruler only really has two scenes. Pretty much. He kills Kelsier and then he has the like throne room at the end. So I, th- yeah, I think like I, I think this is this would actually be casting that I could really see happening. Right. Yeah. I was I was actually very happy with this. I think it's very funny to pit. 
um, him against Vin again in another show, but mm-hmm. uh, that that's just me. I found that funny. Um, but yeah, he he seems like he could be very evil. Yeah, Kelsey apparently is thirty seven or thirty eight, so I would cast someone in their like mid thirties for um for mayor. mayor but... Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. No, I'm. No, I I, I dig this. This is fun. Great. I think that's it. No. Oh, yes. Your favorite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carr, the Inquisitor, would be played by Travis Willingham, obviously. Um, look, he already has an axe. He already has an he axe. He already has an axe. Um, I'm very into this. <laughs> uh, I'm shocked. But only if he does it as Grog Strongjaw. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Yes, of course. Because um, he's like what? He's like six foot four, right? Uh, he's large yeah, boy. Yeah, he's, he's big. He's he's large boy. He's large boy. <laughs> no notes. <laughs> Just imagine him with spikes through his eyes, you know, and I'd terrifying. Not. Terrifying. I'm fine <laughs> not doing that. No, I like this casting. I think you've done a good job. I, I definitely think uh, you 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 cast it exactly the way that I should have expected you to have cast it. What does which that is mean? you pulled actors from things we've watched in the last month and put them in the movie. What have which... we seen of Florence Pugh in the last month? Your dreams. Fair. Fair. Um, House of the Dragon hasn't been out for a while, I'm just saying. And That's that true, but it's got a dragon acting. in it, so you remember it. Yes. If exactly. there are dragons in it, you will remember I will it. remember. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Can we get Nolan North and Travis Baker to voice some Steel Inquisitors? You know what? Sure, why not? Oh, Troy Baker, yeah, yeah. Just have all voice actors. Uh, no, this is fun. I, I think that you've done a great job. Um, I definitely have notes, but, um... <laughs> I, I think you did a great job. It's fine. That's why there's a casting team, you mm-hmm. know, and it's not just one person making the decisions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I definitely think um, sure that's it. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be really just Expensive. mediocre on Disney Plus um, because <laughs> Disney Plus can't seem to make a TV show. But other than that, it's great. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I was trying. I have to strong feelings about Percy Jackson right now, guys. Um, I was trying to trying to think of something, but uh, yeah. Wandavision was great two years ago. Wandavision was great. I love Wandavision, and, and I like a lot of the Star Wars stuff. I think Andor is amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. Diego Luna. Di- yeah. Uh, Diego Luna. It, is it'll awesome. be good on Disney Plus because Diego Luna's in it. Exactly. And Diego Luna is the Disney Plus whisperer. Shall we get to our fan uh, questions yes. of the book? I'm going to pee first. Oh, my God. This seems like an appropriate time. How dare you urinate? All right, y'all. We're going to get into our questions tab here. Um, I didn't actually talk to the mods. Uh, hopefully, everything's fine. Uh, but I trust you, Arzu. Oh, are there green check marks when Arzu says this question is fine? Let's go, Arzu. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate you. Uh, everyone, give a good old, while Clarus is out of the room, give a good old appreciation to the mods, if you could. Say thank you, mods. Um, our mods are the best, and we're very grateful and uh, uh, lucky to have them. Uh, Matt Smith for Lord Ruler. That would be fun. I like Matt Smith for Lord Ruler. I'm into that. Woo mods. That's right, everybody. Woo, woo mods. Um... Cool. Cool, 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 I'm trying to kill time until my wife comes back. I'm trying to kill time till my wife comes back. I'm trying to kill time till my wife comes back. I'm trying to kill time till my wife comes back. I'm trying to kill time till my wife comes back. Kill time till my wife comes back. I'm trying to kill, I'm trying to kill, I'm trying to kill, I'm trying to kill. Time until my wife comes back. Beautiful song. Beautiful. Absolutely. I'm trying to kill. Arzu, thank you for five gifted members. Five memberships. gifted members. Arzu, thank you so much thank for that. We appreciate you. Hell yeah. Demetrios asks, so if the final empire was a heist story, kind of like Ocean's Eleven for the Italian job, or the Italian job, what type of story do you expect book two to be? Ocean's Twelve. That was the funnier answer. Thank you. You're welcome. What am I here for? (laughs) That is significantly hilarious. Um, Significantly hilarious. I think it is going to be a political espionage. I think it's going to be more about the like wheeling and dealing to try and not go to war. And then I think the third book will be the war. 
The war between whom? The dominances. Oh, interesting. Well, all of the nobles in all of the countries, like all, most of the nobles left Luthadel in this book, right? So I think that most book, of them? Yeah, they were fleeing by barge. They stopped holding balls because everyone was out of town. Mm. I think they've all gone home to their plantations and we're essentially going to have the American Civil War where it is literally going to be a war about whether or not we can keep slaves. And so there's going to be the like the slavery plantation war that's happening with Ellen and the like Luthadel army. And then on the other side, you're going to have, like, Vin, Sezed, and Marsh have to fight the deepness. Mmm, interesting. So those two things are, like, paired together yeah. for, like, the action versus the kind of, like, espionage. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? <clears throat> cool. Okay, I like that. Because I was like, fuck, I don't really know, but I'm going to steal your answer. I think that just makes sense. Yeah. Um, they definitely need to figure out what the deepness is. Uh, Connor yeah. Crane says, did you guys look at the Ars Arcanum at the back of the book? No, haven't read it. Didn't know if there were spoilers in it or not, so we just kind of left it alone. I saw the symbols. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, the name is hidden. Do they hide their own names if no, they want it No, you have hidden? to disable streamer mode. Oh. Jabroni006. Uh, Jabroni, uh, and for everyone who's waiting on minis from Relay 2... Uh, we're sending them out on Monday. Yes. The shipment will go out mon hopefully Monday. We will get it to them on Monday. I don't know when they're going to send it out. Uh, but Jaboni, your minis will be in the mail on Monday. Uh, sorry it's taking so long to get those out. Um, it's been a little bit more complicated than we thought. Uh, but we are working on it. We're getting it done. Um, thank you for supporting the charity stream. Yes. What did you guys think about the setting of the story? Do you think the mists and ashes play into the overall story and mood? Uh, yeah. I mean, like... Um... They, they they set the tone for the world before you even know how different the world is. Mm -hmm. Like, ash falling from the sky and, like, mist coming in at night is, like, ominous. And then when you build on that where, like, plants aren't green yeah. and the sky is not blue. Like, like it was those little things that I think built up and it, it built up to, to building the world in a way that was, I found, really interesting. I, I do have questions for the world about, like, food production. Mostly, mostly food production. That's right. kind of the one that I'm like, how do these people live in this? But what do you mean? How are they producing enough food to feed all of these people? Given the ash and the lack of sunlight and the lack of plants. Well, they have hundreds of slaves to clean the ash off of things. Oh, sure. I just mean like the more the ecolo ecological damage of it, the lack of sunlight. Like, Well, the... ash is actually apparently very good for crops. In small amounts, yes. But when okay. it's blanketing the sky, like I, I, I do hope the books kind of, mm, I, here's the thing. I think the mists and the ash are really good for setting the vibes. Yeah. They gave me a lot of questions about the world that make the world seem a little bit impossible. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hopeful that the next couple of books make the world a little bit more possible from that perspective. And I'm, I, I'm not overly concerned about it because I like, it doesn't ruin the book for me because I don't think that for Vin's story, it mattered here. Yeah. But I am very curious about like, wait, but if everything is ash and there's no plants. There are plants. Sure, 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 sure. But, but you know what I mean? Like, like. Yeah. They're, they're very different than ours. Ash in this amount would be very dangerous. And it would cause health complications. And they're, they're, like there would be there are downsides to living near a volcano. And there are upsides to living near a volcano. There's equal measures. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious to see if we'll see how those downsides affect the story moving forward. I have a feeling the ash can't work the same way as it would like on Earth. Fair because fair. otherwise everybody would have, like, would ha have terrible asthma or like lung conditions. Um, I don't know that it would affect that as much, but I don't. I don't know. I don't, don't know how it works. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's got to work. It's got to be a little bit different. Yeah, no, I'm just curious if the books get into it or not. Yeah. So we'll see when we read them. Yeah. Uh, but no, for the vibes, I think for the mood, as you said, uh, I think the mood is definitely set really well by those. Yeah, things. definitely. Uh, Sl Shim Slady, oh, God, you fuckers <laughs> with the like. Oh, I moved words or letters around in a word. Fuck you, dyslexic boy. Uh, what do you think of Vin drawing on the mists? What's up with that? <clears throat> Good Fuck question. Good question. Um, obviously, they have to have something to do with Farrakimi. Uh, um, ooh, okay. Like, I wasn't thinking Farrakimi, but... Well, because that's how she... 
that's how, how the book ends. Like, she's like, I draw from the mists. Mm -hmm. And, or maybe it's something that only an Alamancer and Fairy Chemist can do. But the mist showed up when the Lord Ruler showed up. So, and, and in that prequel, the mists, like, attacked people. So I wonder if the deepness... <clears throat> The deepness Down with fuels the, deepness. the mists, but also fuels Allomancy. Like, mm -hmm. Allomancy came from the deepness, and the Lord Ruler held the deepness kind of at bay. Did he? Well, he seems to imply that they're fucked, like, now that he's gone. Maybe. Maybe. Or was the deepness winning the whole time? Um, I don't know, because I don't really have any details on what... Like, the deepness in the, the flashback, in the, in the diary stuff, yeah. was, like, literally, like, consuming land? Like, kind of, like, yeah, but that might have just been the mists, in the never-ending right? story. Like, that's, the deepness is kind of, in those, in those diary moments, like, sounds like the nothing from the never-ending story. Like, literally, like... It sounds like that, but we have no idea what it actually is. So. Yeah. It's tough. I, I don't know. I think right now... Um, I think that it was a nice tease at things that we're going to learn about in the future, but I don't... It could be anything. Yeah. It could be that Alamancy comes from the mist. It could be that the mists are so metallic because of the water that they're made out of. You know, like, it could be that the mists are the souls of the their ancestors from before the deepness, right? Oh, wow. Could be. They seem to re react to things, right? So Maybe the mists <laughs> are the 13th metal. I don't know what the mists are made out of. I don't know. Their... Now there's 13 medals. By book three, there's 26 medals. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Uh, Linus Vilkstrom says, uh, what do you think of the Lord Ruler do? What? Wait, what? Huh? Uh, what do you think the Lord Ruler oh, does or has convinced yeah. himself he does for the people? Nothing. Yeah, I think that the Lord Ruler thinks that he keeps the deepness at bay and that just lets him be in, like, like he, so that, so then he deserves to be in charge and will do anything to keep his power. And like, any means justify him, like, keeping the deepness at bay or whatever it is. That, I also think there's an element of it that he believes that the world has to be what it is in order to hold the deepness back. And so he needs slavery to maintain the social order of this world that he's built. Mm -hmm. um, because any threat to the world that he's built is too great a threat to allow to exist. And so I think that it all kind of comes from that. Fair. All right. Yeah. Is he's just trying to keep things the same. Which, is, which goes to my point about, like, the, it's not necessarily that he's one in any way Rashek, right like his life is miserable he's lonely and he's lord over a, a country of lonely sad people and he's he's really just made the last thousand years of his own life miserable to get back at someone that he didn't like a thousand years like it, it's just it's such a wasted life and so, such wasted power and it's unfortunate yeah <clears throat> yeah Barros. Thank you so much for 10 gifted membership. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Hell yeah. That's incredibly kind. Thank yeah. you. Enjoy those. All the green people in the chat. Meg. Enjoy uh, the Meg. audio book reactions that you can go watch now. Yeah. Oh, I did not make the schedule for the next book. Oops. Oh, yeah. Mods. We know the dates. We're but... going to have to talk about. No, nope, we already know what they are. We know what they are. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I was not aware. Um, Yeah, the next book is going to be parts one and two on... February 2nd, parts 3 and 4 on February 16th, parts 5 and 6 on the February 23rd, and the full book recap on March 1st. Okay, cool. Yeah, there is a week off in there while we're in Denver because yeah, we can't. because we'll be, in, we'll literally be in the air during yeah. the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think the Lord Ruler is, is really just telling this story of his need, uh, and it's making his own life sad. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> uh, Chloe asks, now that you know Rashik killed him and took his place, what's your opinion on the author of the log book? Mm. The supposed to be hero. Uh, that's a tough question to answer. It's one um, of those things where I think there's actually a really interesting story to be told about 
if, if Rashik didn't kill him and this person became the Lord Ruler in the way that we know the Lord Ruler, I would love to see the story of how that person fell so far. Um, but that is not what but happened. But they didn't and fall. What? They didn't fall. I'm saying if if the if it turned out that the Lord Ruler was the guy from the logbook. Oh, I would love yeah, to yeah. see that story, but that's that's not the story, and that's totally okay. Um, I think that the author from the log book sounds interesting, but I think we read the Wheel of Time, so I, it it feels yeah. I'm trying to think what like my rent. opinion of him is. I I don't know that I care about him at all. Well, because he's dead, and he's been dead for a thousand years, and, and he didn't so... do anything. Yeah, he yeah he got screwed over pretty much. He's only interesting in what he was supposed to do, but but I I don't know that there's I don't know that he has any. I don't have any perspective on the world that he lived in, other than his perspective on it, which was that he was supposed to save it and didn't. So I I don't know I don't really have much of an opinion of him at all. Yeah, yeah he's he's more of a device. Yeah. Um, I would love to know more. Like, I'm, I'm curious if we're going to keep learning about him or if the, the reveal done. is that it's just he wasn't, he was supposed to be important but didn't end up being, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, KSBS Snow Owl. Wow. Uh, uh, Snow Owl. <laughs> Let's go with that. Uh, says, if you were a one metal Alamancer, what type of misting would you be? I think that we think, I think we've already talked about this, right? Yeah. Like the only good ones are steel pull, or uh, iron pulling, or uh, soothing rioting, and that's it. I I don't know. I think pewter arm definitely. Pewter has arm its maybe yeah. Yeah. Like I and I think that. I think that out of all of those things in today's like world, like I'm like, what would be useful? A pewter mm -hmm. pewter arm. But I think maybe the most useful. Like I um. I don't know. How often do you need super strength, realistically? For fun. To make TikToks. But, like, I'm not going to go around controlling people's emotions. I, yeah, I yeah. genuinely don't think I could do that, even if I had the means to. Like, I would just feel weird about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, for me, I, I think I would choose to be a pewter arm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's the one that makes sense. Yeah. I, it does help you heal yourself. Smoke Brandon has secrets. confirmed that tin makes sex better. Wait, really? Brandon Sanderson confirmed that? Well, fuck it. Then I'm a tin eye. God damn. <laughs> <clears throat> sure, there you no, go. No, actually, you. I don't need sex to be more. I don't need to feel more. You're like, I'm good. Yeah. If anything, like, I, I would, like, burn pewter to, like, last longer. So I think I would still go with pewter arm in that. Mm-hmm. Look, I think it would be really fun to, like, fly. So steel pushing but you would be fun. No, but you would have to have steel pushing and iron pulling. So yeah. The, so the problem... It would be incredibly dangerous. You would have to have both. Unless you can't you have just, one. Unless you just, like, stood on a thing and you push yourself up in the air and then you kind of, like, slowly... Like, you can, like, jump. You know what I mean? You, you know. Enough. No, you need the. I, it's only only Mistborns can do it because they're the only ones who can safely. You would need because you would you they need the pewter to be able to survive the landing. But if you could steel push, you could slow your like if you had enough control, you could just slow your landing to like a feather. As long as there was metal underneath of you directly. It, yes, if the entire world was metal, yes. Yeah. But the I being able to iron pull something to like get yourself over on top of something. Like, without being able to move three-dimensionally, you're just dead. Yeah. You wouldn't last. You you would... Yeah, I think, honestly, the one that has the, the most, like, uses is, is pewter arm in our society. I, yeah. 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 Unless you wanted to go into politics, and then you could be a soother or a writer. God, that would be scary. Ah, uh, God. I think iron pulling, though, is useful because I don't want to move from my chair. So I could just be, like, spoon... <laughs> And a spoon would come to me. Only if it's metal. How many non-metal spoons are there? Why do you need only spoons, though? No, I'm saying... Because I'm lazy, and I want to be like, I need a spoon. I'm not going to get up. I'm just going to pull a spoon okay, out of the kitchen. But when do you need a spoon when you're sitting in your chair? Often. I have to, like, fucking, like, put the 
foot part down, then I have to get up and walk all the way to the kitchen, get the spoon. I could pull my but why phone would you from across only the room. I need a spoon. If you're, if I, you're I'm not saying a spoon. Food. I'm saying if I've, I, okay, so I've got a bowl and I've sat down in my chair, I've kicked my feet up, and I'm sitting there going, oh, fuck, I have a bowl of soup and I don't have a spoon. But why would you sit down with a bowl of soup with not a spoon? Because I forgot to get the fucking spoon. You have ADHD. Why are you asking me this question? Look, if anyone should understand. You should understand. I actually don't know if I've ever forgotten to grab a utensil. Like, maybe, like, a knife if I needed it, but never, like, a fork for my meal. I'm I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait in All the right. darkness of our house waiting for you to forget a utensil, and then I'm going to jump out at you and go, this is what I was talking Should about. filming the whole time? This is the moment. I don't know. I don't know. I look, like, I'm very bad at a lot of things, but I just, I can't say I've ever gotten myself a bowl of soup and forgotten the spoon. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I, I don't think I that I've done that before. I cannot stand you. <laughs> I know. Uh, Linus asks, looking back at the start of book club, you were wondering if you'd have enough comments to fill even an hour. Do you feel three hours is even enough now? That is a hilarious question. When we started book club, Wheel of Time, we were like, yeah, may, maybe 90 minutes max. And I think our first episode was like 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then it was 2.15. Yeah. And then it was 2.40. And then we just kind of settled into now, three hours. Well, to be fair, 45 minutes of that every episode is me yelling at you about spoons or some such bullshit. Exactly. So. The tangents are part of the show. The- it is a segment that we have to include. Otherwise, it is not the Nerdy Wordy Book Club. We were talking with... Apple Podcasts this week. Yeah. Um, just just like a like brand check-in or whatever. Mm-hmm. It was really sweet. Uh, we really appreciate them. Uh, and they were like, you know, we want to help you guys grow. Uh, and I was like, I don't know how much we're going to grow because our show is three hours and I don't know who has the time. And our D&D show on Saturday is four. So we put out like seven hours of just podcasts plus all of our reactions. We make too much content. Like I don't, I feel like keeping up with the amount of content that we put out would be a full-time job. Yeah. And so don't watch all of it. I, I would love if you did because it would help our numbers. But, like, I really am not asking you guys to put in, like, Look, a fucking full-time job. Here's the thing. You can go subscribe to our podcast on the podcast feed, but you don't have to listen to them. We just, we make so, we make so much content. Yeah. We yeah. need to slow down. Yeah. Or hire more people. Yeah. Either or. Uh, I, on the on the subject of the podcast feed, though, uh, we are we we're gonna you know make that a little prettier, clean that up a little bit. If you're a podcast listener and mm-hmm. you're like, thank fucking god, you guys um, have ugly logos. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna we yeah we I don't know if any of you are podcast users, uh, I would actually love to hear from you in the Discord. Um, you know, uh, because we wanna we wanna try and help our podcast find more people and maybe do more podcasts. But also do less work. We need to make less content, but also make more podcasts. Anyways. Um, um, Dynan <laughs> says, yeah, I can't keep up with it. I missed the Dice Towers I sent for like a month. They've been in a bunch of different videos. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. They've yeah. been in a book club. They're, we we rolled them uh, during our D&D game on Saturday. We, we used them. Yeah, it's one of those things where, yeah, we, we make too much shit, and I'm so sorry. We need to slow down. All right, guys, this is the end of Book Club. This was fun. Final also, Empire, Final I, Book Club. What about our new podcast idea? <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, no, Linus, we, I never, ever thought that we would do, like, a three-hour show every Friday and it feel, like, not enough sometimes. Um, but here we are. <laughs> Here we, we are. Like, There's so many things we didn't talk about. Yeah, here we are. <clears throat> and then uh, people, in the, people in the comments below were like, you guys didn't talk about this. And we're like, it was three and a half hours. What more do you want from us? Team Rocket asks, one of the things that stood out to me when you were reading oh. in the Brandon Wheel of Time books was how you liked that he played with the rules of magic system in creative ways. Yes. I knew you, you would love this part of Mistborn. So I do. What was your favorite use of the medals in the story? And what medals do you want to know more about? Oh, the, 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 the arrowheads. Yes, yes. The rings on the arrowheads. That was my favorite. Fantastic. That was so good. Same with the spinning bars that Kelsier does. Yeah. That was When insane. he's spinning bars. Um, yes. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, no, uh, yeah. For me, it was definitely the arrowheads. Yeah, that was fantastic. I really want to know more about gold. 
I think that there's something to to that. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. That we're just we're just missing. And I have a feeling they're missing. gonna burn a lot more gold in the rest of the series. Yeah. I think that that's gonna be, there's gonna be something important about burning gold that's gonna become relevant later on. Yeah. Um, Sakar Eight says, "Now that the final empire has been defeated, wouldn't that make it the penultimate empire? Maybe, or it could be the final empire. They could literally be like, guys, democracy. Yeah, this is a democracy. Ireland might be uh, a democrat until the first order arrives, and thirty years from now, God damn it. Vin has to teach a young Ray Skywalker how to mistborn." So that oh she can take down Kylo Ren in the First Order. Early Anne asks, after the Sanchan and the opening of this book in the POV of a slaver, are you satisfied with how the narrative addresses the world, the in-world slavery so far? Yeah, yeah. I am. Uh, I, I think that the slavery is treated as the... As a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think that the, the thing that this book does really well in relation to slavery that uh, Wheel of Time does so poorly is that it shows that the dehumanization of the slaves within the slaver-master relationship um, hurts and harms the the emotional well-being and physical well-being of the slaves, but also stunts and harms the master as well. And it it gets into the fact that treating other people poorly not only harms the people that you're treating poorly, but also harms yourself. Mm -hmm. And that there is a legitimate value in treating other people well. Yeah. And that it makes you not only a better person, but a happier person. Uh, and I, I think that this book addresses all of that in a way that never, the, the Wheel of Time just never got into. Uh, and so it, it was frustrating in the Wheel of Time because it treated slavery like a thing that could have an upside. And in my opinion, it just, it does not. Yeah. It creates bad people. Uh, and it uh, harms everybody involved. Yeah. Um, obviously, to... the slaves more. I'm, I'm not saying that, like, the masters have it as bad, but the... And maybe masters is the wrong word to use, but it... it... I mean, that is kind of the... Yeah, the nobles, or at least. But no, I, I agree, and I think that, like, having in the beginning that, like, whether or not it's it's true, you know, it, it might not be, but the moment where uh, they talk about the um, dominances that are further away from the capital... They're like, oh, yeah, they're kind of, like, treating their ska better, and it's actually, like, working out for people. Like, yeah. it, like things are, like, better there for treating everybody. Treating people well, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think that, um, I think it's also dealt with it very well. Uh, Dinah, welcome to the nerd table. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Colonel Sanders says, yeah, but slavery was a central storyline here, while Sanchin was a side story. Was it a side story? It does not feel like that. It dominated. One of our main, like, well, and I don't want to spoil it too much, but eight books. yeah, I, I I don't agree with you that it was a side story. It was too front and center for it to be treated the way that it was. Um, yeah. And honestly, like I, the the further we get away from Wheel of Time, I don't think I will read those books again, even though there's things about them that I love, um, mm-hmm. because of that element of it. I, I think that it soured the series too much for me personally. Yeah. And and for other people, it's not going to right. And I think that that is that's going to be a person by person thing. It's subjective. Yeah. But for me, there are so many books out there in the world uh, where I don't have to sit there and be like, well, I don't like this at all one bit, but I'm going to read thousands of pages on it to get to the stuff that I do like. I yeah. read it. I know it's there. I know what I like about that series, and I, I'm just kind of done with it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I watch season that... three when the show comes out, but I, I don't know. If they'll pick up those books again. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I have uh, some of the audiobooks. I think that I will listen to like the first six. Mm-hmm. Um, but after that, I honestly don't. I don't really know. Yeah. Maybe uh, in a decade I'll feel differently, but yeah, there's so many books out there. Yeah. Um, Stone Sinew asked if I mean look it's going to take me the next like 10 years just to get through all of Brandon Sanderson's bullshit so probably uh, if Doxon decided to run a D&D campaign for the crew in their downtime what kinds of characters do you think everyone would create and who do you think would be the most fun to play with Ham would be the most fun but also frustrating to play with Ham would play a paladin mm, um, interesting Breeze would play a bard Breeze would play a bard. Okay. Kelsier would play a uh, fighter. I think Kelsier would play a necromancer. No, he doesn't like to control other people. Really? Because uh, that's exactly what he does. No, I mean, like, I, I don't know that any of the Ska would want to play a, a character that has that kind of literal control. 
But he literally sets up the fight in the the Ska army. No, he inspires controls. other people to fight. But he does not By fucking force with their anybody. emotions. Somewhat, yeah. He no, like I, riots him. I, I understand that. I, I just think that that is very different from... I, I don't see Kelsier as enjoying the concept of controlling the dead. All right. I just I, I see him as being like a annoying fighter who is maybe multi classes barbarian, so he has rage and action surge. Oh my god! And it's just like a pain in the ass because of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I yeah. I don't see him as a necromancer. I can see him as like a sorcerer. Okay. Marsh is a warlock. Hmm. I think clubs would play like a druid or something like totally like left field. Hmm. I could see it. Yeah. Who would Vin be? Hmm. Vin would play a rogue. She'd be like, Yeah. I'm just yeah, gonna yeah. play myself. <laughs> yeah. See, Meemunk says Kel is a Hexblade Warlock. I don't think he is. I don't think he would make the deal with the patron, right? Hmm. That's why I think Marsh would. I think that Marsh would make a deal with an otherworldly patron to get what he wants. Okay, okay. That's why I say Warlock for Marsh. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think that I think that Ham would be the most fun and also the most frustrating to deal with, to play with, mm-hmm. because you, sometimes you would just want to like play for fun, and Ham would all have all these moral questions about the choices that your characters are making. Yeah. Who are we missing? <laughs> Did we miss anybody? Docs. Well, Docson's a DM. Mm-hmm. What so. What would Yeden be? Yeden. Yeah. He'd be a ranger. Useless. Mm. I'm kidding. Rangers yeah. can be fun. But Early honestly, levels. at that point, just play an arcane archer. You know what I yeah. mean? Eh. Um, the Wheel Reads asks, who is your favorite secondary character and why is it Breeze? Oh, it's not Breeze. Um, um, I think it might be Cliss. I was going to say the same. <laughs> I, I was I, like so taken aback by that moment that I was like, holy shit. I think about Cliss a lot. And I love her. I don't know why. She just really stood up to me. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't have much to do. Like, mm-hmm. definitely, like, a very secondary... You might even say tertiary. But yeah. yeah. Um, a secondary, I, I, I don't know. Like, uh, of the crew that aren't Kels and Vin, I think Marsh becomes my favorite at the end. Okay, sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Marsh's, like, commitment to the cause, I think the what, you know, what he's willing to endure in order to participate... And accomplish their goals is so horrifying. And he is, he feels like he still has his soul mm-hmm. somehow in that final scene. And I, I really love that about him. I actually think that my favorite secondary character, I do love Marsh. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, like, it's tough. I think that getting Ellen's POV mm-hmm. about the things he really doesn't understand about the world to be really interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, he is a nobleman who, like, believes that the world works a certain way and, like, understands that the information he's been taught may not be right and is trying to look for something else. But all of that information is also read through the lens of someone who is in his position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that it was written really well um, and fascinating to read. So it's a tough call for me between Marsh and Ellen. Um, oh, uh, say that also. Say that also. I, yeah. Oh, say that for the D&D game um, would probably... Uh... That's tough. Because, oh, like, part of me thinks Paladin, part of me thinks Cleric. Sezed would play whoever the I think note-taker Sezed, is. No, you know what? I think Sezed would... Yeah, he would definitely be the note-taker. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think that he would surprise everyone at the table and be the most chaotic player. Like... Right. No, you know what? Sezed would come to the table mm-hmm. with a very thick character sheet, and he would have min-maxed because he would know all of the history of Dungeons and & Dragons. And the rules. And so he would be like, I know how I have built a character that is perfectly situated for every possible situation. Yeah, it would be so multi-class to shit that yeah, like, yeah. I, we wouldn't even be able to comprehend it. Like a wizard monk multi-class. Some yeah, yeah. crazy like amalgamation He's, He has a wondrous item at level one somehow, and you're like, you're sure. Like, how did you get that? <laughs> yeah, no, I like that. Um, That's very funny. Uh, Silent Mist says the book ends with someone born into immense privilege, Ellen, taking power as monarch. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, most of the book was set up as a Ska Rebellion and about the oppressed taking back their power rights. Do you feel that Ellen's ascension undermines the Ska's fight in any way? We did actually talk about this at the end of the book as well. Um, Yes. I think that 
Ellen being at the head of things for now <laughs> is necessary because none of the Ska have any kind of experience in, like, like city, country, nation leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Ellen, uh, like, I think Ellen definitely can fall into the trap of uh, keeping himself, like, overseeing his welcome in that area. But I, I mean, he's king. He literally can't oversee his welcome, right? I, I guess. I don't Unless think he has they're to stay planning king. on doing, like, abdication. Yeah. yeah. But I just think that if you put any of the Scott in charge that what they accomplished would fall apart. Skipcat says a cleric that changes God after each long rest, and I think that that is such a funny idea for Seized. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, no, I, I think uh, the... I don't think it undermines the rebellion, because the rebellion was successful, right? Mm -hmm. I think that the, the storytelling of it is that this war isn't over yet. Mm -hmm. And the movement forward for the Scar Rebellion... If they were to kill all the nobles and take Luthadel, they have to fight every single other person in the country, right? Yeah. They have to fight every plantation owner one by one to, to, to win. And I think that by installing a intelligent, kind, um, and, like, interested noble as the king, you, you do have a sort of stability for those people who might treat their ska on their plantation really well and might be more open to the idea of moving more towards a whatever next system might be by having someone that they can see in the throne that reminds them of the system that they are used to. Mm -hmm. I, I think a little bit of that we're used to this allows for them to have a different sort of path forward that would be a lot harder if they had just murdered everybody and it it was a, you know, this war that was born purely out of anger moving forward. I think that the... Ska and the noblemen of Luthadel being able to present a united front against the world and say, hey, there's a better way forward. We can work together to do this. We can create a world where we are all equal. Um, I, I just think that it encourages less violence moving forward, but not no violence moving forward because I don't think that's possible. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. On top of what you said about like <clears throat> them being able, to, you know, needing someone who can understand the economics of running a country, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously like there is like, I, I am assuming that there is, like, a deeply ingrained, like, trade relationship with the central dominance and the other dominances. Well, and food has come from somewhere, right? Exactly. And so if those kinds of things fall apart yeah. and people starve or whatever it is, like, that could be just a detrimental. And so it, it, is, a, it is a complicated situation, but I think that Ellen does have to play a role. Well, and we see it in, in, in real revolutions, right? Like, uh, unfortunately, there, we've had a lot of revolutions in the last <clears throat> two decades, and there's a significant number of them that have fallen into economic hardship yes. because the parties that took over either were led by very charismatic rebel leaders whose mm -hmm. maybe Experience. themselves or underlings were corrupt, and okay, the, yeah. the, the financial life of that country... Um, becomes hampered in the idea of or or in the aftermath of the re revolution how do you control the money right how, mm -hmm. how do you kind of survive in the world after when you have a underclass that has been impoverished for decades mm -hmm. finally have power and there are people within that underclass that are now the the majority class who are are in a position where they've had it so hard that they're willing to take whatever they can for them and their own and they aren't thinking about the greater good of the country, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we, we, we see that over and over and over again. And it is really hard to transition from revolution to government. It is just, a, it is a very difficult proposition. Yeah. In the best of circumstances. Yeah. And so I think that this is a little bit easier than trying to build something from scratch. Yeah. But, but, it, but it is imperfect, right? You know, if it wasn't Ellen and we we didn't know Ellen's heart the way that we do as the reader, I would be much more hesitant about it. Yeah, yeah, I would have concerns. Yeah. Um, and even still, I have concerns because you never know what that kind of like authority does to people. Yeah. Um, even someone no, who who means who means well at all times can become corrupt. So like, it's just kind of humans <clears throat> are humans suck. Um, yeah. 
Uh, Jordy, Jordy fan. I'm so sorry. It's one of those two. Um, I think it's Jordy. Okay, Jordy fan asks. Uh, Kelsier is a character who possesses a lot of typically villainous traits. He's arrogant, vain, secretive, and takes clear satisfaction with the nobles he kills. However, the he channels these darker qualities towards undeniably heroic goals and intentionally surrounds himself with good people who are able to check some of his worst impulses. Given this, my question is about what kind of man do you think Kelsier is at his core? Was setting him up as a god to bring down the final, em, final empire primarily about freeing the Skull and giving them hope, or was he motiva- motivated by revenge on the Lord Ruler and nobility as well as cementing his own legacy? Both. Yeah. I mean, I people mean, contain multitudes, and so I don't think it could ever just be one and never the other. I don't know that I agree with your first statement. I don't know that I agree that arrogance, vanity secretiveness and taking satisfaction and killing slavers are villainous qualities. I mean, I think taking satisfaction in murder is a villainous quality, no no matter whether the person deserves it or not. I don't agree with that. I, I just don't. Like, I think that, like, yeah. if you are killing the people who are enslaving your people and you're like, I feel really good about what I've done for my enslaved brethren, I, nah, I, I, yeah, I'd be satisfied. I think Fucking that celebrate, you can, man. I think that you can take satisfaction in, like, what that means moving forward, but in the actual, like, killing and violence of taking another human life, I think that that is a villainous trait that I think that Kelsier displays, which is why I thought that he was going to become the villain. See, I, I, I it, it always reminds me of that girl who killed um, the guy that, uh, like, it's... Kept her for like 10 years, yeah. Um, yeah. And that she was in, like, that she was going to court and she was like being tried for it, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I kept looking at that case and being like, we should be throwing her a parade. Yeah, sure. Like, I, I think that she should be celebrated and I think that she should feel really good about what she did. Yeah. Personally. But I like, do, look, I, and I, I, I agree with I that. I admit, I, I am also, I think internally, a darker person, right? Where, like, I'm like, no, fucking kill them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> I And I know that about myself. And it's why I keep some of my opinions not online. Because I am a, I have a very... Um, You're already canceled. It's fine. I have a very strong opinion about certain things. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't always understand how other people are like, yeah, but, like, killing is always wrong. And I'm like, no. Um, I, I just, no, I don't. It's like the one major thing we disagree about. I think that Kelsier's arrogance is kind of just normal for this situation in a weird way. And I don't think he's a villain. Like, I just, I really don't view him as being villainous. He's not a villain. Right. But the, the, the qualities aren't necessarily villainous. I think that, like, I think Gandalf is arrogant. And I think Gandalf is a very, I I don't think that Gandalf has, like, villainous qualities. Yeah, but I, I, like, I think that taking satisfaction or pleasure in the act of murder, no matter what the circumstance is. There's a big difference between satisfaction and pleasure. Those, that is a difference. If you get off on killing people, that is very different. I don't mean sexual pleasure. I mean joy. Like, there are people who, like, take joy in killing, and obviously that is a villainous trait. Now, the act of murder in and of itself is, I think, villainous, no matter, like, I, I just, despite what that means, like, that person being killed. Um, See, I, I, yeah, I, I am concerned for someone who is like, yeah, I am happy to kill that person. I, I think that there's a... For me, it's the difference between pleasure and satisfaction. Mm-hmm. I think that feeling satisfied in killing someone who has done you immense wrong mm-hmm. is is fine. And that we, we as a society, over-villainize it because we are too puritanical about murder. Yeah, I don't agree with because you. Because of the Bible and, you know, religious crap. Tr- trust but. me, it's not because of the Bible. <laughs> Well, but societally it is, right? Like, like our cultural I just understanding mean, like, of it. My personal opinion leans towards that, and it has nothing to do with religion, because I am not religious, nor do I have any like uh, any knowledge of like what murder means to religions. Sure, I, I just I I don't 
I, I think that is, I don't view murder as a black mark on your soul because I don't necessarily think that souls exist. So I'm like, sure. I, don't, I don't think that, I, I don't believe in the universal tally system, right? I, I don't think You don't that, believe everything happens for a reason? I think everything happens a lot. for a reason, but that reason isn't that God is monitoring your actions and gives you good things when you do good. No, yeah. Right? I, I, I just don't believe in that. And so I also can't believe that there's somebody watching and, like, punishing you for being bad. Especially no. when the being bad is in response to someone else being worse. Like, I, yeah. I think I think rape is worse than murder. Sure. Right? Yeah. Because I think that the person, the, the, the victim has to live with the act that you have perpetuated upon them. Yep. And so, like, for me, I think that murdering the person who raped you is a proportional response. Uh, yeah, I think it's a response, but I also think that murdering that person makes them get off easy. Like, I would rather them be thrown in jail for 25 years, you know what I mean? See, I don't want to waste the resources on them. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think it is worth giving them food. Really? So much food the gets only, thrown out the every day. Only, the only reason why I am not... See, this is going to get weird because I'm also like, I, I'm not pro capital punishment. The problem with capital punishment isn't the punishment. It is that so many of the people within that system are innocent, which yeah. is a weird. Yeah. That's a whole other discussion. Uh, but yeah, I think that that is, this is like one of like the biggest things that we disagree on as people yeah. that like, I also it's be... funny because people are always like, you guys are the same person. Why can't she have any opinions for herself? And I'm like, well, you clearly never watched our book club. <laughs> like... I also want to be clear that I will never hold public office and that I know that I have some extreme opinions in this realm and I mostly keep them to myself because I don't know that I'm right. I just feel how I feel. Sure. And so it's one of those things where, like, I shouldn't be in charge. I know that I shouldn't be in charge, and I'm not trying to be. I am a YouTuber. You are Amos. <laughs> I am a YouTuber. I enjoy my life. Mm -hmm. And I let people who are better at this stuff be in charge of that stuff because mm -hmm. I can't make that call. Because my, my response isn't what I think most other people would be comfortable with. I think that I would be a much more violent responder in most situations than most other people. Mm -hmm. And so I put myself in places where I don't have to do any of that mm -hmm. because I don't know that I would make choices that other people would think were right that I would be 100% comfortable with. Right. And so I don't. I stay out of it and I let people who are more empathetic make those calls. Mm -hmm. And I know that about myself and I'm aware of it. And so I just kind of like pay attention to people who I think are more emotionally aware than I am and listen to what they have to say about it. Because I go, oh, that person raped a woman. Why don't we just cut his head off? And then he doesn't exist anymore and we all just forget that he exists. I think that that is a worse punishment than prison. Okay. Your name is stricken from the record and nobody remembers I mean, you. like I, and that comes down to whether or not you believe that they're like death is the end i think um because I, I think that like dying is easy see i don't think there's anything after death mm -hmm. and so if there's nothing after death the worst punishment that you can give someone is that they don't get to exist anymore but they don't know that they don't exist i know but life is a gift sure you are you are like like Yes, prison prison is hard, but they also have libraries mm -hmm. with incredible stories that you can escape through. You know what I mean? Like the, there, there's, um, I, in my opinion, the, the 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 worst thing that you can do is not exist anymore, because then there's no pleasure in it for you. There's nothing. Nothing is worse than what what, what the world that we have. So you you place a high importance on legacy. Oh, I don't care when I'm gone. <laughs> I just want to keep living. I, I want to keep enjoying my life. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Interesting. I, I, I think that it is a worse punishment to be dead. Yeah. A hundred percent. Okay. But, but I don't believe in heaven, right? Like, so I'm not, I don't, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to die and go somewhere. I'm just going to be like, I'm, I'm enjoying this life as, I'm, I'm going to suck the teat of this life until it's dry. And then <laughs> unfortunately it's over, right? Okay. Interesting. But, yeah, I, you know, yeah. 
by just prolonging it, you just give people teats to suck on. I don't know. What? <laughs> You heard me. Sorry, my brain went, uh, no. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah. Bringing it back to Kelsier, I, like, we, I think we see differently on his character. Like, I think that what he does, like, riding that guy for them to, like, fight, um. That scene is fucked. Is... No, no, that scene is absolutely fucked. Because he rides that guy, and then at the end is like, this guy deserves to die. And it's like, why does he deserve, you did this. Yeah. That one is a, that scene is a hundred percent Kelsier's fault. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I agree yeah. with you absolutely. Well, there. that's why I think that he does display some villainous traits. Some. Sure. The, the question was just that, like, taking... I don't think that taking clear satisfaction in the nobles he kills is the villainous traits. I think that there are... I think that, like, these specifically... I don't think there's anything wrong with being arrogant, inherently. I don't think being arrogant makes you a bad person. No, no. I don't think that being But it is does. something that we, like, apply to villains. I agree. I don't think... I think that vain... most of our heroes are vain. Yeah, I think, oh, for I think sure. Tony Stark is an incredibly arrogant and vain man. Even Vin... Hard to say that MCU or Tony Stark is the villain of that series. Sure. You know? Even Vin displays, like, vainness in a sense of, like... Oh, like I like yeah. feeling this way about myself and how I look, and mm -hmm. I yeah, I I definitely don't think that that is like a negative trait, but it is like uh, oftentimes applied to villainous characters. You know? Mm, yeah, maybe. I I just I, I, I think, think it's that, that it's like a, almost a trope. I think that traits are neutral. I think almost all traits are neutral because I think that any trait can be applied to any kind of character. I think that it is actions that aren't. And I don't have a... Other than... The, the cave scene is the one action Kelsier takes in the book that I have a problem with. Hmm. Because I just don't get it. I don't get why he kills the guy. It's just like... The, the end of it doesn't make sense. The beginning of it totally does. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, but, yeah, the end of it doesn't. Yeah. Mimung says Tony Stark kind of creates Ultron. Okay, but he creates Ultron by accident and then immediately does everything in his power to stop Ultron because he knows it's bad. Yeah. Like, he's not a villain. He fucked up. Yeah, people make mistakes. Now, that doesn't make them I want villainous. To be very clear. Comic book Tony Stark is a villain. I'm, I'm talking about the movies because most people know them. Right. Comic right. book Tony Stark can eat an egg. But oh, wow. Okay. He's a bad guy a lot of the time. Sure. Um, Isn't he like. Yeah. A, I, I don't know. I've never read one, so I'm not going to... What? It depends on who's Isn't writing him. is he, like, him. really awful to Pepper? Depends on who's writing him. Okay. Gotcha. Comic books are tough because, like... Different writers like, have different ideas of what a character is. Yeah. Reed I, Richards is both the greatest hero of the Marvel Universe and the greatest villain of the Marvel Universe. Cyclops, Scott Summers, is both the best X-Man and the worst X-Men. It right. really depends on who's writing them. Gotcha. Um, all right. Let's move on to Ray's question. Do you have any crackpot theories about the Inquisitor's metal spikes and how they function? Any idea how that concept might be used in future books? Well, my crackpot theory is that... Um, they are the dildos of misborn women, uh, and those women masturbate with them to a hundred orgasms. They give the power of the orgasm, and then when they are lubed with the power of a hundred orgasms, they are inserted into misborn eyes. Oh my god! That's... Well, no, actually, no, because um, Marsh wasn't a misborn, so uh, he was create he was made into a misborn by the power of a hundred misborn women's orgasms. This seems like the hundred companions all over again. Just like it's one woman though. Blu -ray. It's just a hundred orgasms. No, it's the same woman. So every every inquisitor has a female counterpart, uh -huh. and so she takes the spikes and she uses them to masturbate, and she orgasms on the spikes. That sounds awful. Uh, and then no, they're actually like they're round on the end. They're they're, they're they they do vibrate. But we don't. We know they're not round on the end because the inquisitor got impaled on the bear. Uh, where wheel thing wood, wood. Um. Yeah. Really rich uh, noble women in Luthadel. Uh, this is such a 180 from the conversation we we're just having. Uh, really rich women in Luthadel will actually pay um, uh, coin pushers and and lurchers uh, to stand around their bed, right? And they'll insert the metal spike into their vagina. And then they will have all of them turn on their powers and push and pull on it at the same time. And all of that power together makes it just vibrate like crazy. Uh, and it is uh, but a wild orgasm have, experience. You would have to get um, iron and steel people who were at the exact same like strength level. Because otherwise the woman would die. 
No, they're practiced. No, no, this is a team. They know what they're doing. This feels like one of those dangerous elements of, like, people who, like, choking to get off. Yeah. They're like, I recognize that this may kill me, but worth it, question mark? Yeah, no, this this is a team. They're they're practiced. They know what's up. You can't affect metal that's inside the body. Fascinating. So does the moment it, like, okay, passes but the, through is the, the, the... No, no, like, the okay, the metal can't pierce the cervix. I think if it's in the canal, it's fine. But, that, but when but it's in the cervix... But your stomach is no different. The metals in your stomach are no different. But we also know no, that no, the no, they are. can affect the No, metals. The, the, metals, the metals in your stomach are different because they have to pass through a cervix. Here's the thing. The they Lord have to Ruler... Pass through, they have to... No. The metals in your stomach have to pass through a sphincter, so they're technically inside of something, whereas in the vaginal canal, they're not in your body yet. So... They have to get through the cervix. The earring is not a... The ear is not a sphincter. I don't know if you know this. No, but it goes... It goes... Uh, it is actually inside of her. Yeah, yeah. It okay. pierces her. So, the, it's, so it has to pass through a sphincter is what yeah. Meridia is saying. But if it's like inside your nose, it's still pullable. Okay. But if you breathe it in, once it like passes the esophagus, it's too late. But you could pull like... If there was like uh... a tooth, like a fake tooth, I think you could yank that. That was inside your gums? No, it was just like a cap on top of a tooth. But it's like inside your mouth. Anyway, so basically this team your surrounds mouth, the bed. And they all go... And then the thing goes... And then, uh, yeah, she comes like crazy every time. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're, they're expensive. Uh, you know. You have to hire a whole team mm -hmm. just, to, just to orgasm. Hey, you know what? The nobles I mean, do hey... It. There are women in our world who would love to have that kind of service available. You know what? That's fair. Yeah. Because um, their men aren't doing it for them. Oh, my God. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the metals... Okay. I, I don't know how I can say anything after that about the spikes. So... The vibrator squats. Oh, my God. Uh... Apologers. Yeah. You've talked a little about how you think there are maybe other allomancy and fear chemi powers via metals that have not been introduced. What abilities do you think might be coming in the future? Um. Hmm. You know what's tough about that is the, um, what's tough about that is the, so there's the, bo there's the body, the mind, and time. Uh-huh. So what is another dimension that could be affected by metals? Maybe is it your different like chakras? What are the different chakras? Soul? Is there a soul one? Are there soul, soul metals? Soul metals. I, I don't know. Soul metal alchemist. Oh <laughs> no, allomancy. Um, huh. I mean, in a world of magic, the 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 possibilities are infinite. I don't know how many more you would want to add on to this. Because yeah. they would start, like, overlapping with one another, mm -hmm. you know? Like, if you were like, oh, a metal that makes you fly, I mean, they basically already fly. Yeah. Anyways. A metal that makes you invisible? I'm just thinking of, like, D&D &D powers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, plus um, one to AC. Like, a metal that uh, is prone to making sparks. When you burn it, you can breathe fire. Sure. It's like the flint, the flint metal. You burn flint to it's, breathe fire. It's flint, yeah. What would be the opposite of flint? Um. What is the opposite of fire? What's like a metal that you find in diuretics and it could make you like just piss like crazy. And I so you have like fire and water like streaming at the same time. It sounds awful. I hate it here. Oh my god. Um, maybe there's a metal... No, no. Oh, swallow fire. Yeah, like you could be fire resistant. I like that. What if there's... They have to burn it while they're fighting in See, a volcano. I'm like trying to think of things, but they're already kind of covered. I'm like, oh, a healing metal, but that's already Pure. kind of pewter. Like, so, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I feel like it, I'm, I'm going to go with it's breathing fire. Sure, sure. Uh, Demetra says, so Kelsier died in this book. Uh, do you expect more important characters to death? Well, I fucking can't read to, okay, do you expect more important character deaths this series? Will everyone survive, or will somebody get claimed by the Sanderland? Yeah, people are gonna die. Yeah, I think we. I don't think Marsh that. makes it to the end. No. No, I think he's. I think he makes it. Maybe the book three, but I don't think Marsh survives. Okay. Um, I definitely think more of the crew dies. Um, I think Ellen might die. Ah, oh, interesting. Um, 
I don't know. Who do you think will die? Ellen is an interesting one. Less the Bornis. Less the Bornis will sacrifice himself for Vin. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah probably. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, people will definitely die. I think we're going to meet new characters who are also going to die. Yeah, this um, series doesn't seem to be afraid to kill people. And there are a lot of characters. So, like, there are people who could die, right? And it's a dark world. Yeah. So, it's a dark... <laughs> Marsh gets replaced by Swamp. <laughs> God damn it. Um, uh, Garion asks... Now that you've read Sanderson standalone works outside the Wheel of Time, how did it stack up with your expectations? Yeah, right where I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The things I liked about this book are the things I liked about the Gathering Storm. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I think it it stacked up well, or it surpassed. Honestly, mm-hmm. really, really loved this world and this story, and it was the quality of writing yeah. I wanted with world building that was better than I expected. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, one thing I love about this book is that it stands on its own. Like, yes, I'm excited to see what happens next in this world, but it could also stop here and I would be happy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want more, but if this was the, if it was just, this is the story that I told, fill in the rest with your imagination. I, I like when first books are lat. I like the, I like that about A New Hope, right? The Star Wars book, movie, um, where, the, you know, obviously you want to know what happens next, but Darth Vader is cleaning into space. The big bad thing is destroyed. And you're like, this was a, that's a good movie. It, it stands on its own. Yeah. I think that first books kind of need to have that because you don't know if you're going to get a second one. Mm-hmm. And I think that too many first books nowadays, like, set up the future and aren't great individually. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that this is a really, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I love this as a first book. It's why the, the title of this video is A Masterful Beginning. Because I think that this is a really solid first book that is both a independent story and also the potential for a huge world to, from here. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what were the improvements and drawbacks writing wise compared to say the gathering storm since it was your favorite? I just think that the gathering storm was telling someone else a story. Yeah. And that, that, that was always just going to be like a hindrance to well, and I, I just, an author. I, I think that like, unfortunately the wheel of time books get so bogged down in having to clean up past books. Yeah. And the, 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 you know, it's not like he took over Gathering Storm at like a really clean place. Yeah. There was a lot of complicated dovetailing that happens in the first half of Gathering Storm. And then, you know, the, the, there's just there's constant dovetailing. I think I'm using that term right. Uh, throughout that series where the plots are messy in a way that makes it hard for books to stand on their own. And so I think that this book really does stand on its own because of that, right? Yeah. 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 Um, at this point, what do you think Era 2 is about? Your predictions after reading the first book of Era 1. Um, I, I'm curious if Era 2 even has these characters in it. Yeah. Or if it's them, but, like, much older. Mm-hmm. But they're not the main characters. I don't think these characters are the main characters of Era 2. Yeah. Like, I think if Vin is mentioned, it's, like, near the end of book 1, and it's, like, a fun, like, oh, my God, she's still around moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Era 2, there's going to be, like, like this world needs a lot of help. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so I think it's going to be more of the how do we how do we make this work after all of this shit that we lost? Um, yeah. And how do we, like, almost, like st- almost start over? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Era 2 was, like, 15 years down the road. Yeah, at least would be my guess. Yeah. The world is, you know, settled into, you know, sort of, or, you know, even 30, like, um, the sequel trilogy. Like, the world has settled into the new normal, and it has to change again. You Era know? 2 is actually another 1,000 years into the future, and it's just history repeating itself. I would love that. That would be very cool. That would be interesting. Yeah. I, I like, I would actually read a series like that in a heartbeat, where it was, like, different people and how they reacted to almost these same scenarios. Yeah. That they were thrust into in the same world. Um, with, with, you know, with slight differences that are clearly like Vin's imprint on the world and Kelsier's imprint on the world. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that you could even like, it would be interesting if Era 2 took place in a world where down the line, Kelsier being this like God figure is, um, Kelsier being this God figure has had a negative impact on the world. Yeah. And like Era 2 is about these characters having to deal with the legacy of Kelsier and it not going well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. the wheel of time. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, no, and that's that's why the turning of the wheel was like 
interesting itself in concept to me, but I don't think was executed well in like the ending and the epilogue. Personally, uh, not my favorite. Um, Sweet and Savory asks, what was your favorite fight slash battle this book? And how would you like to see the medals be used in battles fights to come? Um, the best one is, oh, that's tough. I know, right? Because, like, Kelsier versus the Inquisitor, Inquisitor is, is rad. banger. But then also Vin versus the Inquisitors is also banger. I actually think banger. Vin and versus Shan, Shan yeah, is that's also a good fight. Great. So, I. What is my favorite? I don't know. I think I'm going to go Vin and Shan. I, the moment okay. of the, like, was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like for me it was Kelsier versus... Inquisitor. Inquisitor. That's fair. I think they're all pretty good. Yeah. Um, uh, what, how would you like to see medals be used in battles fights to come? I would like to see them play more with soothing, soothing and rioting each other during fights. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a really fun idea of how to, like, throw your opponent off mid-fight... I, I, I think that soothing and rioting could be the way to beat ATM by making their, like, rioting their confusion when you flare your ATM or, or things like that mm. to, um, I, I feel like you could use emotional war play during combat more than this book did. So I'd like to see Vin kind of become an expert at that. That's fun. I love that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Telkamar Althor asks the conversation leading up to Vin telling the crew, you're no Scott, you're just stubborn noble, or you're just noblemen with titles, without titles. God, I can't read either. Uh, you're no Scott, you're just noblemen without titles. Uh, full excerpt uh, is one of my favorite sections of the book and one that has stuck with me for a long time. Yeah. Well, I do believe this is said in a moment of anger and doesn't fully reflect Vin's most truthful view of the crew. I think there is enough of a truth to what she says to carry weight and merit a discussion on the crew's privilege within their own class, as well as Kelsier's willingness to completely condemn the oppressing class rather than liberate the oppressors from themselves. From themselves. Yeah. What is your opinion on the crew insofar as representatives of the Scott population they seek to liberate? I, I think Vin is very correct yes. in this speech. And I think that the crew acknowledges it, which is why they, like, aren't that upset with her. No. They, and I, <laughs> Like, they I, know. I also don't think that this is the first time they've had those thoughts, right? I think like, they're very aware of their privilege. Yeah. Um... I, I agree with you, right? It's why I don't hate Ellen being king at the end. Because I do think that the... Like I said earlier, I, I like that this book confronts that slavery harms the oppressor and the oppressed. Yeah. It's almost like... I don't know why this came to mind. Because I don't think it's a perfect one-to-one. Mm-hmm. But, like, people get mad at Mr. Beast doing good in the world mm-hmm. with his platform and with his money. Whereas, yes. like... Like, the reason Kelsier gets together good men and good people is because he does want to make the life better for Scott and make the world a better place. While also, like, that they, they have that side of selfish, selfishness where they live better than most people, right? Like, cause, because of what they do for work. And I just think that there's, like, interesting parallels there. Yeah, I agree with that. Because... They're not totally selfless. Otherwise, like, everything that they had, they would give away. But if they do that, it 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 puts them in a worse position to do more good in the future for people. Because they need the resources. They need the ATM. They need the, yeah. like, the medals. And they need to be able to afford the personas and afford the information uh, from, like, their informants and things like that Mm -hmm. um so it's it's a it's a really complicated question that i think vin nails and i do think that a lot of them have thought of that before especially him (laughs) yeah no i agree with you i i I think that it is the interesting conversation of can you live a perfect life no right (laughs) thank you uh (laughs) Great. That's in my. That's in what I was going to say. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Uh, no, I, I just mean in, in the sense of like, you can never be the most inspirational and also be the most. Um, I'm like trying to think. Selfless. Of the right. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, you have to take care of yourself first. Yeah. 
And there is just an element of Vin's correct in what she is saying, but also their power and their ability to pass in this case is what makes all of this possible. And so you 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 do you need kind of a you need to have resources, and you can make the better place the world a better place with resources. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you have resources and you're not using them for that, right? Like we see that with Elon Musk and the a lot of his actions yeah. in recent years versus a lot of his actions in earlier years of his life, right? Uh -huh. There, it, it does feel like Elon Musk as he has gathered more and more resources, has become less in touch with how to make those resources more beneficial to a wider variety of people. And I think that losing touch is the risk. Yeah, 100%. That, yeah, yeah. that like, um, having the awareness helps, like, mitigate that. And also having someone like Vin there who is, like, freshly, uh, uh, like, the lowest of the low yeah. ska, um, that, that helps to negate that. But, yeah, it is really easy to lose perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we see it all the time, to be yeah. honest. No, and, and we do. And I, I think that it is a, it's one of those tough conversations. It, it's something that I think about a lot, right? Like I have more money than 95% of the people on the planet, right? Just, just, just by living in America, you probably have more money than... Than most people. The, uh, the poorest American probably has more money than 70% of the world. Right. You know what I mean? And so there, there's a level of, um, th there's a really difficult level of perspective. poverty in the world <laughs> to bring proper perspective to, right? Yeah. And I, I, I don't know what the right answer to those things are. I don't know if I'm living the most ethical life. I try really hard, right? Like I, I do, I, I try really hard. We, we do our charity streams and we try and give yeah. back and, you know, I tip really well. And like, I, I'm, I'm like actively tr thinking about and trying to be aware of the issues of the world so that I am living my life in a way that benefits other people as much as possible. Yeah. But also the job that I have is making content on the internet to make people happy. My goal with all of this is to entertain people and to bring some joy to life. In order to do that, I have to have a certain level of technology. We were talking about cell phones earlier. Yeah. Where, like, you know, the the, the, the things within cell phones are maybe not acquired in an ethical way. It, and that sucks. But yeah. you pretty much cannot live in today's society without a cell phone. You are expected to be at beck and call of work, no matter what that work is. If this is work, you know, yeah. like if you are like an influencer, a content creator, or even if you have an office job, you have to have a computer or a cell phone or like be connected at all times. So unless you're acquiring the resources yourself and making your own cell phone, like these are the, the like the, mm -hmm. these are also problematic in ways and like what what are we supposed to do about that oh i'm not gonna have a cell phone well then you can't exist in today's society in a way that is going to yeah. that, that helps anybody and you not all of us can be christopher nolan you, yeah yeah exactly and like one person boycotting a cell phone doesn't make a difference on those resources and how they are acquired so it's yeah um, the Linus Victor Linus Victor says depends on which society to be honest. <laughs> Plenty of places where internet access is like a weekly thing. Again, but I would have to walk away from my from everybody I know. Everybody. I would have to give up on every relationship know. in my world. You know what I mean? Like it is all of our like career skills. Yeah. We would have like it is a tough conversation that we all are walking the balance beam of. And I think that there is so much right about what uh, Vin is bringing up to them. But I also think that mm -hmm. it is somewhat unfair to these people in particular because their goals in this situation are to benefit those people, yeah. right? Kelsier more than the rest. A lot of them are there for the money because they don't think it's going to be successful. Yeah. Kelsier genuinely believes in this, right? Yeah. And I we, we find out later on in the book, he believes in it far more than we thought he did. Yeah. And yeah. it, it just, it becomes, it becomes a really difficult balance of how do you exist in the world? Mm -hmm. And I think that these men live in the world better than most. And I think that that is a pretty good thing to be, right? It's kind of the most that you can ask for just because of 
because things are complicated. And uh, yeah. someone brought up the good place, Emery's. Yeah, that's it's kind of exactly what it is. If you, if you want an, an interesting comedy that deals with this these these issues, I, I highly recommend the good place. It's an incredible show. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting topic. I, I, I think that that speech is really well done, really well thought out, and I, I um, hope to see more of that from Brandon Sanderson's works in the future. Uh, is in the chat says, would Chidi consider cell phones ethically okay? I think that Chidi would have an aneurysm trying, trying to, to think it, it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would never be able to answer that question because they're such an integrated part of how the world functions now yeah. that it is both impossible to remove them and also impossible to produce them ethically. And I, I don't I don't know what the answer to that question is. Again, I listen to much smarter people than I because I'm I have a degree in musical theater. I can't answer that question. Like I feel I think, like you need many degrees to be able to properly answer that question. I think producing them ethically is possible without like the capitalist world that we live in because you have to have a new there's new cell phones every single year. Like yeah, if a cell yeah, phone yeah. was one thing that you bought every five to ten years um like you would need less resources and then you wouldn't need to like exploit people to get that the the large sum of those resources and i i I think it you know not to sound like a but uh, it's capitalism (laughs) that's the problem (laughs) i also just i i think that one of the 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 tough road that you go down there mentally is that you can't live your life playing mental arithmetic on morality like you just you can't you can't exist that way. It is too draining and difficult on yeah. you as a person. And and that's what The Good Place kind of gets into with Chidi, right? Is I, I could do a whole book club on Chidi, but... Um, I think you relate. On those pets. Uh, I, I, I think I do relate to Chidi. I think yeah. I'm more... I, I'm def- I definitely have a more violent mindset than he does in Retribution, like we talked about earlier. Sure, sure, sure. But I think I do relate to Chidi in a lot of ways. Um, and it's probably the autism, but... Um, we both got that tism, Riz. Uh, I think that the, the the difficulty of being too aware of it is that it becomes the only thing that you are able to focus on. Yeah. And at that point, if this is the one life that we get, if you are if you're unable to enjoy anything because of the math going on in your head, are you just wasting your life? Right. Are 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 you taking this one thing that you have? The, Can you enjoy anything? Yeah. I don't know. You could walk into the happiest place on earth, Disney World, and see the exploitative, capitalistic, like, like it just, you couldn't, you, you could never enjoy anything. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's tough. It yeah. is, it's a lot of tough questions. And unfortunately, I don't know everything. And I wish that I did, but I, I don't. And so like, there, I find out new things every day that are problems. And I'm like, I... You're like, great, I'll add that to the list. Can't do anything about that one. I don't know. Yeah, there's only so much you can do. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, This is going to be Star. Just given the metals, effects you know. Would you rather be a Mistborn or a Ferrochemist? Assume there's no difficulty to getting the exact metals you need. Oh, fucking Mistborn. Are you kidding me? Fuck Ferrochemy. Really? Yeah. I want to fly. I just have a terrible memory, and it sounds... (laughs) like really nice to be able to not oh your fan things. castings would be so much better yeah no they would because i would actually you wouldn't be like tom people. hiddleston for the 16 year old boy yeah i said young tom hiddleston okay i knew what i was doing that one was tough okay um i don't know that's so difficult because yeah flying sounds really cool both no um i think no, I think if I were to pick one, I would go ferrochemist. Really? Yeah. Uh, I just can't imagine, like, sitting without, like, uh, it sounds like a lot of meditating. Oh, I don't meditate. Like, you would have to be like, I'm going to go lie in bed and feel extremely weak and near death for the next two hours so that I have two hours of strength tomorrow. That's what I do already. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm like, okay, we have videos to record tomorrow. I need to conserve my energy because I'm burnt out. This is already my life. I don't oh, see what the problem God. is. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Yeah, choose the Lord Ruler option. Go for both. No, I think that I, I think I would take Mistborns. Okay. Yeah, I'll just burn. 
I'll burn till burn, I'm dead. Burn, baby, burn. Pondering Books asks, if you were a keeper like Sazed, what set of knowledge would you want to collect? Uh, I would be the new obscure Lord of the Rings facts guy. <laughs> Fuck you, Don Marshall. Sorry, Don, I'm taking your job. It's just so funny. I have a DM from him waiting right there. Um, oh, hilarious. Uh, um, yeah, fuck Don Marshall. And I would do Star Wars. We would just put Alex Damon and Don Marshall out of a job. Uh, what would I What would I, I say? Would, I would want to remember fun fantasy things. The sad thing is that I know the truth of me is that I would, I would chronicle all of the saddest stuff. Why? Because I know myself really well. Oh, God. And I just, I know that I would want to chronicle the loss and, and the pain in the world. I would remember, It would make me miserable, but I would do it. I would remember every TV show that we reacted to so that I wouldn't forget things and the internet wouldn't get upset. Useful. Useful. Yeah. I would remember all of the character names in The Wheel of Time. <laughs> I don't know, even that... Remembering sad things does not... I mean, here's the thing. I guess they don't live in your brain rent-free. They're, like, stored in a thing that you can go back and look at. So you don't have to be living in sadness. It's not about living in sadness. It's it's about... Um, it's about honoring the people who experienced it. Right? Sure. Okay. It's, it's, why, it's why I think that, like, nonfiction is so important and why, like, the, the rise of, like, AI and nonfiction is so scary to me is that I, I think that you need a human touch in telling those stories because there, there is something so... There's something so sad in the, the people that we lose and whose stories are lost with them and, and that they just, they just go away. Yeah. Um, and I think that... I, I think that we need to remember the losses, especially the losses that are our fault as a species, right? That that are, are you know, the, the losses that come about as a desire for the endless grind of capitalism and all of that. We, we need to honor those people and the way in which we as a society have failed them. Mm. Fair. Yeah. yeah, I think that's totally valid. Um, Okayla asks, what is your theory on what the Cosmere is and what, if anything, ties it together? I have no fucking clue. I don't know if there's enough in this book to really dive into that. Unless the deepness is like a recurring villain across the universe. I don't I don't know. Era 2 is just the same thing happening on a different planet. Possible. Yeah, I don't know. I, I... The Cosmere is actually the wheel of time that keeps turning, and it's the same thousand years over and over again. Uh, yeah. Star asks, what personal attribute do you wish you could store up and use like a ferrochemist IRL? Doesn't have to be anything that can be stored in canon or that you've read. Just anything you feel like would fit a ferrochemy power. Oh, sexual stamina. If I could just not jack off for a month and then have like the craziest day of sex ever. But the thing is you would need a partner who is also like equipped for that. Why would it be one partner? Sure. I'm saying like orgy you had, like, one... February 15th yeah. and I'm like I am not. I am not I ain't coming. touching it. I, I am no nut Novembering, and on December 1st, I'm going edging. through an apartment building worth of partners. Yeah, that is called edging. It's not. No, because that doesn't make you better on... No, I'm saying that, like, I would get, like, I would get to December 1st, no nut November, right? Uh, my balls are the size of watermelons, and I am just spraying Gross. down. Like, uh, the, the fire department calls, and is like, hey, we got a building on fire. We need you to go give that a little squirt, squirt, put it out. Does cum put out fire? <laughs> Have yeah. you tried? I, I'm pretty sure it would. What if it's like oil and it makes it worse? I, 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 I don't know that anyone has ever had a like large enough vat of cum to try put out a fire, fire with it. But I'm assuming it would work. Actually, it's what fire extinguishers are made out of. I don't like that. I don't either. Uh... It's just aerosolized cum. <laughs> This is the only show on the internet where someone can be saying, we need to remember the victims of capitalism. Also, I would like to be able to come so much that a fire department asks me to save a building. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, the two genders. <laughs> <laughs> what is our show? I don't know. That's why it's really hard to like market our show. Because it's like, you need to have... Nerdy rages against capitalism mind. and also is the most sexual human... 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Sorry, Project Myrtle. Uh, you might just, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I wouldn't do that, because, like, that, that seems like a lot. So I would store up. Philip says, have you ever heard of a sperm bank burning down? Bet you haven't. <laughs> oh, my God. Because of all the gum. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's why. Um, oh my God, Jesus Christ! I what? What could you store up? I don't know. <laughs> why do I exist like this? Oh my God! I would store cell regeneration. So you know, I could look like shit if we're not filming for like a week. Okay. And then I suddenly exfoliate, and I am glowing, glowing like the sun. My right. hair is lustrous. You know what apparently is also good to help you glow? Don't even. Come. Get the fuck out of here. Early Ann says, in real life, there are some 90-ish medals. Aside from the currently known metal powers, what fun powers would you like from currently unknown medals, i.e. Grow, glowing or math skills? Math skills. That sounds great. Jeffy kind of answered this already. It's tough because, like, the powers seem pretty good. But, yeah, I, I think more intelligence or, like, faster brain processing. But that's what ATM is, I guess. Maybe the opposite of ATM is that you process information faster. How would that be the opposite of seeing the future? I don't fucking know. Okay, I'm just <laughs> asking the questions. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not answering them. Um, uh, yeah, no, fa like being able to process information far would, pa faster would be fun. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like... Yeah, you could, like, learn a new language super quickly. Just be like, oh, yeah, no, I, I can now suddenly speak Korean. It's great. I can travel. That's actually, that would be sick. Right? Burning a medal to, like, be able to understand other languages. That would be sick. Right? Yeah. You go to another it's country like and you're like, It's like a universal translator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I need my aluminum. I gotta go burn aluminum in Japan. <laughs> oh, my God, because I need to order my food. And I don't know what people are saying to me. Um, languages are fun. Yeah. You could actually speak coding as well. You could speak to you computers. You can speak binary. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it helps you speak to water evaporators. <laughs> we don't need C-3PO. We're burning fucking aluminum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why not? It's actually uranium. It's great. Um, what? I wouldn't burn uranium inside your body. That's how you die. What about mercury, you know? That's, Can't be well, that bad. Actually, no. Here's the thing. If you burn it, do you get cancer from it? Well, don't you get cancer from exposure to it? Not like ingesting, but just like being in the vicinity? Or is that lead? Is that lead paint? I don't know. Uh, don't we're know. not scientists. Uh, anyway, This is why I keep being like, guys, I don't know everything. I, I just give opinions on stuff and then people tell me I'm wrong. Um, would math's powers work in the case of bisexuality since the hosts keep insisting it causes issues? I think we would burn it faster. Yeah, I think that it would be one of those like we need sure. more to get the same effect. Sure, sure. It's sort of like me and you, you and extra. Tylenol, right? Like you need one Tylenol and I need four. It would I... be like that. <laughs> Sure. I'm a big boy. Yeah. Um, Carrie. The first time I'll go straight to my dick, and then you know I need three for the rest of me. Are you saying that your dick is the size of me? Is that what this is supposed to imply? I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, Karen asks, now that you finished your first book, Holy Written by Sanderson, how do you both feel about your decision to make Cosmere, uh, Cosmere, your our next big book club project? Pretty happy so far. Good. Like the community, like the conversations, like the book. Happy about it. It was a good rock, paper, scissors, and I think we won. Yeah, we won. We I did. won, we, but we won. We, yeah, we won. Yeah. Uh, Shim's Lady asks, building on Chloe's earlier question, uh, your views on the author of the logbook. He seems to be a complex character who has killed many to build a vast imperial apparatus, but also laments that fact and desperately clings to evidence of his humanity. I can still see the tears in a young child's eyes and feel pain at his suffering. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of his ruminations on what he has done and the brutality he is engaged with? I can't have an opinion on that because I don't know what the deepness is. Yeah. It's one of those tough things where is it was it actually necessary or not? And it's, it's so tough because right now I'm like, well, 
you did all that and failed. So like you were a failure and you brought nothing but pain to the world and you accomplished very little in all of the pain that you created. Yeah. While at the same time, we could find out chapter one next book because we haven't, we haven't even cracked it, right? That no, actually he was amazing. The deepness was that bad. You know, it, it really is tough right now. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I it, That's a hard question to answer at this point in time. Uranium has 20 billion calories. How much uranium? I don't know. See, that's the question. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm. It's, it's interesting, right? Because I, I'm having a hard time judging him, because we don't know the circumstances. And, well, well and we only see his perspective. Like, I think that the problem with a character like him is that his perspective is like even when Rashek is revealed to be Rashek, he doesn't say anything about this guy. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that for me, like, the issue is one gram of uranium. So don't eat uranium. Well, I wouldn't eat uranium for a lot of reasons, but... So would you just die? Like, how would that... Would you shit it all out? If you ate uranium? No, you would die. If you ate uranium, you'd be dead. (laughs) That's what I'm asking. I think that you would die of radiation poisoning almost immediately. What if you could burn a metal to protect against radiation poisoning? Oh, I like that. Suddenly, nuclear power is a okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I think that the, like, I understand his point of view of of him having a problem with what he's done. I, you know, it is the problem with all prophecy characters, right? Mm-hmm. You have to satisfy the prophecies because that's what the book says you have to do. How do you live with what you've done? How does Randolph Thor live with what he's done? Right? How does Harry Potter live with his actions? Yeah. Um, Harry Potter's a little bit easier, but. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, it really is the, like, you know, to what end? And I think part of the problem for me with this guy is I just, I don't know what the end was because I don't know what the deepness was. And he also didn't succeed. So he just kind of, like, yeah. did a lot and sucked. Shim's Lady also says a good example of this brutal pragmatism is reflecting that he should have had a mentor father figure killed for denouncing him. Based on these insights to his character, do you think the author would have made a better sliver of infinity than Rashek? I mean, Rashek seems to have acted out of hate and anger, whereas the, like, author of the thing is is tr- at least trying to make the world a better place in a way that, like, he doesn't have a lot of control of. It seems like he was the victim of a prophecy, and yeah. now everyone around him expects something of him. And so I think he would have been better, but... It, again, it's hard to know with the information that we have. Yeah. Um. I. But I, but he doesn't kill the guy. He later on after Rashek murders him. No, no, no. He doesn't kill oh, his um, doesn't, mentor. Yeah. I think that like he he later on reflects that he should have because everything is becoming too much. Like it, it's more a story of how he doesn't handle the stress well because I think that what we see is that at the beginning of his journey he might be the right guy for it and he just can't live up to it. Right. It's too much pressure. It's too much stress. And so he becomes a darker and more difficult individual as it goes on. Yeah. But I don't think that's where he starts out as. And so it is more of a descent into madness sort of story than it is a, like, this guy was always bad kind of story. Sure, yeah. And so I, I don't judge him too harshly for that because I can't imagine having the weight of the world on my shoulders like that. Like, I am stressed all the time and I run a YouTube channel. I can't imagine what you have to save everybody and you have to kill people to do it would be like. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I just, I so I, I don't... I don't judge him too harshly because I don't know all the details. Yeah. But if I did know more details, I would judge him very harshly because you guys know that's my favorite thing to do. Judge people. Yes. Uh, Colonel Sanders, welcome back to the nerd table. Rando Thor lived with it by not giving a shit and being a bit of an ass. Yeah, I mean, he just fucked off. He's like, I'm going to go have a vacation. Say it again for the children in the back. Yeah, yeah. It does. It. it His mm. children uh, who are neglected. Yeah. I... What is the next question? Uh, more Cess Primen. Yep. Like you, my first Sando was Wheel of Time, and it got when I got to my first Brando Sando, I was shocked at just how different his worlds are to what I'm familiar. Wheel of Time is unique in its own way, but ultimately, it's familiar fantasy. So, what about Miss World, World, Miss Born World, surprised you the most? Well, I'm so dyslexic today. Uh, <laughs> wow, I can't read at all. It's fine. That was phrased a little like... Nope, nope, nope. They're fine. It was me. Um, I just, I understood but, where your brain was at. It was me. 
I want to be very clear. It was me. Uh, for me, I think the biggest surprise uh, was that after how we raged against slavery, people didn't warn us more that this starts with uh, slavery. I'm actually surprised we didn't get more messages about that. Um, be like, hey, give it a chance. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I opened the prologue and I was like, no! <laughs> I, I, think the, I think the thing that was most surprising to me was how fun the like heist element was. Like the oh, thieving crews, in the, especially in the early chapter with um, what's her? What's the first boss they have's name? The first boss, Ka 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 Karen. 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 Whatever. Um, I really, I really thought he was um a really fun character to like introduce us to the world of this being a thieving crew doing a job. Uh, it reminded me of Sly Cooper, the raccoon video games, and I loved that about it. Oh, my hairstylist told me that there is a raccoon island in Florida that you can visit. I know you like raccoons, and I, I thought that <laughs> you would want to know. <laughs> what? What? You said raccoon. What is so funny? I genuinely don't understand. <laughs> I'm like trying to make a point about the eyes. And you're like, my my hairdresser told me there's a raccoon island in Florida. I wanted to tell you about it before I forgot again. <laughs> That's why it's so funny. Because you just randomly say stuff. No, you said raccoon, which <laughs> led to raccoon island. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> I, this I I don't I don't get it. I need one sip. Sorry. Oh, you need a sip. Okay, I I I yeah I I think it was perfectly legitimate. Um, it reminded me of Sly Cooper, and I enjoyed that. Yeah, I, see, I don't know who that is. Great games, Great. really like fucking Sly Cooper. That last one, the time one, oh, it's good, good shit. Yeah. But there's there's they have like a team, and so there's like Sly, and then there's a turtle who's like the tech guy, and mm -hmm. then there's a hippo who's the muscle. Of course. And they do they do crime. Be gay, do crime. Be gay, do, and they are they are gay. Love that. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, I think what was the most surprising about Miss Bourne was the willingness to like, like, uh, there were certain things that like you could consider, I think, tropey mm -hmm. about how information was given and how the story was laid out, at least for like the first half, and I loved how interesting a Brandon Sanderson could make those tropes. I was enthralled the whole time. Even though, like, I I felt like I understood what the structure of the book was. Um, and, like, the, yeah, how the magic worked and everything and learning that was very fucking cool. Um, Ash asks, do you think Reen always had Vin's best interest in mind growing up, however misguided that manifested as, or do you think he was always a terrible brother mm. and him lying to the Inquisitors was a last-moment try for redemption? I think a lot of people are abusive to the people they love most. Um, I don't know that he was a terrible brother, but I don't know that he was... I'm not saying he was a good brother either. I just think that he was a brother. And... Yeah, that's tough. He was abusive, and he did a lot of things that I think are bad, but at the same time, he... I don't know that he did it for redemption. I don't know that he was thinking about redemption. I think that he genuinely loved her. He was just bad about going about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I think the love was real. Because I think that if it was a last minute try for redemption, I think it would imply that, like, the love was fake in some way or that, I don't know. I, I, I don't believe that. I, I, I do think that he genuinely loved Vin. He just grew up in a world that never gave him a shot to know how to express that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I, I don't know that I can really blame a kid whose two options raising his sister uh, after having to kill his own mom before she killed his sister uh, was you can either go be a slave with your sister somewhere or you can go be a thief. And I, I don't know that I can blame that kid for growing up to not being the best person. Yeah. Right? Like, I, I just, I can't. I, 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 from my ivory tower, I can't go, well, he should have, like, grown up to be morally pure. Like, that's ridiculous. He, his options were slavery or thievery. Well, and Reed and also it. was, like, very aware of who Vin's dad is. Yeah. And, like, understood that danger probably better than anybody. And better than Vin did. Yeah. For certain. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I agree with you. It's That's tough. not saying that what he did was okay, though, right? Like, it, it, is, no. it is both things. He was still abusive. Yeah. But he's a believable character. 
No, 100%. Right? I, I think it, yeah, and, and I think that the reveal at the end coming the way that it does from the Inquisitor is rad. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I do. I, I think that it's a great moment for the book. Yeah. Um, and I just, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to be too judgmental of a kid who grew up with literally nothing. Yeah, for sure. In a culture that wanted him to be a slave. I, it's, yeah. it's hard to, like, you know, if he was, like, 35, it's different. But he was, like, 15. Yeah, he was a like, literal child. Or whatever he was, 17, 18. Um, Demetrius asks, this book is commonly recommended for new readers interested in fantasy. Why do you think that is? Uh, it's an easy read. The prose isn't very complicated. It doesn't lean on you understanding the tropes of fantasy in the way that I think, like, Wheel of Time does. Mm. Uh, I think Wheel of Time leans a little bit too heavily on The Lord of the Rings, especially in the early books. Okay, yeah. Um, I think that this is a pretty clean start that yeah. isn't as, like, influenced by other things as some of the other stuff we've read. Yes, yeah. I, I, will, I will agree with that for sure. I think that it is pretty dark, you know. If yeah. someone was going to get into this, I would just be like... Hey, just so you know, if you don't like reading things that really dive into some not great stuff, like, yeah, I would just proceed with caution. Um, it's not going to yeah. be like Sunshine and Rainbows. So as long as they're okay with that, yeah, I mean, I would also recommend this to, like, newer fantasy readers. Yeah, I think I, I think that, like, you know, if I, if, if I was, like, talking to a kid, I would recommend, like, Aragon or, or you know, something a little bit more young reader friendly. Um, but if you're an adult getting into fantasy, I don't think this is a terrible book to start with. Yeah, I agree. And I'm not even saying that young readers shouldn't read this. Uh, I think that there's some really valuable lessons in here that would be great for young readers. I just don't know that I would start their fantasy journey with this. Um, Depending on what kind of stuff they were already reading, I think. Yeah. I, I always say, like, if you're going to start reading fantasy, start with The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. I think it's the best place to start. Um, oh, God. No, I, I do. I think that it... I, I don't know I, if I ever would have read if I started with that. Why, it's so good. The Lord of the Rings books are good. As a child, I think I would have fucking hated. Even The Hobbit, I didn't love. Oh, like, I, I was reading books as a kid. fucking Dragon Rider and, like, Inkheart and, like, fucking unicorn books and talking cats and shit. Like, uh, yeah. The Fellowship of the Rings, mm-hmm. me, just for, well, I guess it depends on what age. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. Depends on taste, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I do think understanding where... I, I don't know. I, I personally am a big understanding where the genre comes from guy is important. It's why it's why I'm glad that I've read Wheel of Time, right? I You know, I, I say what I say about it, and I don't have the strongest opinion of it, and I know that other people do. But um, for me, I think that understanding the arc of the genre is important, and I think that you can't understand that without reading Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um. I, I and that doesn't I mean that I think that those are the best books in the genre. I actually don't think they are. Uh, I think they're a little dense, and I think they're filled with. The, there are some elements of the orcs and things that I, I think are underwritten, um, but I think that they're a, an important part of the history of a genre. And if you really want to understand the genre, you have to understand its history. Mm-hmm. Final question. Early Ann says, "In the way Wheel of Time community insists there is no sex or horror in those books, was there a surprise reading Miss Burn? Something fans insisted that left you shaking your heads." Or did your reading line up with the general expectations? No, for modern, I'm autistic. This is one question. Just kept adding to clarify the actual question. That's no, you're, you're fine. You're fine. You um, get it. <laughs> I feel you. Um, I know. I, I feel like we've been more on board with the audience of this book than um, Lord of the Rings or Wheel of Time early on. Yeah. Was there a surprise? I think that the, the the big thing early on with Wheel of Time is that we weren't known quantities yet, um, in that like the audience didn't know our positions on things, and oh, we had a lot of fans of those books who are um, uh, complain about us being woke, uh, and they're not here anymore, so we yes. don't deal with them. Like a lot of the people who complained about Smut Corner were also complaining that we were woke, and they are like puritanical in a way that I, I don't think lined up with those books, but also obviously didn't line up with our community. And so, you know, we, we, we lost 40% of, or not maybe 30% of that yeah. audience really quick. Yeah. Of people who are like, Once they knew that we were you. like, slavery is bad. And they were like, ah, and it had to leave because, you know, they couldn't handle it. Um, uh, Nimvin, your question, uh, we read every question. So if your question wasn't there, it might've been deleted for having spoilers in it. 
Mm. Um, yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think we missed we any. We didn't miss any. So it, it might have just been a little bit too close to a spoiler for the mods uh, to leave up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, do you agree with that? Yeah, I'm like trying to think if the... Like, I, I didn't really have many expectations going into Mistborn except that like I thought it was gonna be good like yeah. I was pretty sure I was gonna like it especially having read like Sanderson stuff within the Wheel of Time and so I I don't I don't really put a lot of expectations on like n new stuff that I'm gonna read I feel like I'm pretty good at going in with like a clean slate and just cracking the book open yeah. so I, I, I like I don't yeah, I, I, I don't feel like I don't really have a good answer to that question. I'm sorry. I just mean that, like, when we started Wheel of Time and we had a lot of people who are there who are, like, upset that they cast black people in the Wheel of Time TV show. And those people typically aren't here anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, we didn't have people being like, how Kelsier can't be black when you were doing your casting. Yeah. Because those people know that this, is, this channel's not for them. They're not going to enjoy our conversation um, because we don't think that way. Uh, I'm, yeah. I have no problem with... You know, I, I I do have some weird feelings about diversity, only in that I've been watching more TV recently because uh -huh. of football, and I've been watching a lot of TV ads, uh -huh. and I feel, I, I, I don't have a strong opinion about this, but I feel a little bit crazy in that it feels like every single commercial in existence is about interracial couples. Um, when I get, like, casting calls, yeah. for, most of the commercials... That I get auditions for, say, looking for POC or someone with an interesting look. But, but... I, like, I, what the fuck does that mean? I, I, I love getting... I love that we're casting more diverse things. Yeah, me too. I just don't need every single thing to be interracial. And I'm, I'm, so, I'm so pro interracial relationships. It's yeah, not that. Yeah. It's just that there's a weird sort of. We are swinging one. We were trying to overcorrect. <laughs> we'll settle. You know, we'll, we'll, like that, that settling will happen. But I think that for sure that we've been so far one way that the yeah. pendulum is swinging, and it's finally gonna like find its 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 middle ground. There, there's a there's a weird like white guy like light skinned black girl thing. That is like half of the relationships on television, and yeah. I, I I don't have a problem with it. It's just that it's so prevalent that is what's yeah. weird about You're it. You're like I've seen that same couple in a different commercial, yeah, and yeah, that yeah, is yeah. also the same couple. Yeah, it's it's so it's it's it is an interesting yeah, and it's I I don't notice it as much in like a streaming show or in like because I'm not watching ads. But when I watch ads, it's like it's they're back like to back to back to back. It's like four ads where they're like, and this interracial couple's buying insurance, and this interracial couple, and you're like, yeah, I, okay, I get it, cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it is interesting. I, like and like I said, the commercial castings that I get mm -hmm. are almost always even stuff that I get called back for. It's like prefer POC, and I'm like, then why are you? Yeah, why why am why I why am I making a tape for you? Yeah, like uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's it's a there's a YouTuber, um, a, a guy out of Atlanta I follow, uh, who calls it the swirl, and how like we're obsessed with the swirl, um, and he, he's he's a uh, fig fig signifier fig signifier, um, he's a fantastic fantastic like video essayist. Uh, who I, I really respect his opinion, and I, I find him very enlightening. Mm -hmm. um, and his his viewpoint on it is that it like I, I don't want to put words in his mouth. Uh, I I just I recommend him. I, I think that he puts out. Um, All right. Yeah, FD signifier. Uh, I, I I follow him. Uh, clearly, other people in the chat know who he is. Oh, cool. I, I just think that he. I don't agree with him on everything that he says, but I agree with him on most things. And I, I think that he explains things in a way that really helped me, like, put words in my own thoughts. Ah, um, that's, I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. and Not it, telling you the exact way to think and the opinion to have, but giving you the information yeah. so that you can work it out. Yeah, and, you know, I think it helps that I think that he and I are politically very aligned. But, sure. Um, just, just a fascinating world. He, uh, just a fascinating world we live in right now where I, I think that everyone's trying to figure out what diversity and inclusion means and some and in the commercial space it's so hard because there's only three people in the commercial so how do you make your product for everybody and it's like well they're all ethnically ambiguous yeah, yeah. and you don't know where in time or space this insurance shop takes place yeah sure yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. He's the granddaddy of bread tube. Red tube? I don't know what that means. It's a whole thing. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Uh, random thoughts at the end of this video. There's Am I going to get canceled for that? Yeah, how dare you have opinions. I don't opinions. know. Um, we're already canceled. There's already people out there who are like, mm-hmm. woke, nerdy, nightly. How dare. <laughs> uh, Fina Fika says a small minority had good argument about Emmons Field. Most were just racist. Yeah, and I again, like we've had the conversation about that. But, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with it, right? I, I do think Emmons Field is a confusing... But I, I think that everything about the TV show's world is confusing. Like, I don't think they've done a really good job doing any world building. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's the people screaming that, oh, it's woke, are obviously the yeah. loudest and ruin the conversation for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it, it is weird. That is a lot of my problems with, like, there are certain things that we've been like, do we talk about this online? Because we don't want to get lumped in with the people who are just being racist. <laughs> we got accused of that this week. Someone this in, week? yeah, oh, in our right. Percy Jackson video was like, why are you, by being negative about Percy Jackson, you're giving a space for the racists who don't want Annabeth to be black. And I was like, Which is hilarious because we've been like, Annabeth you? is the best part of the show. It was, it was a comment that I was like, I legitimately cannot understand it was like when we reacted to the little mermaid trailer and we were like i don't love how some of the visual effects look and people were like that's racist oh with um you're racist for not liking the little trailer. mermaid yeah, yeah. and we were like no you just didn't think the trailer was great well, like i don't know and it was so confusing so i was like halle bailey and it's how i feel about the movie right yeah i think halle bailey and the guy who plays the prince are the best parts of that movie true and then the rest of the movie, I'm like, everything around her isn't amazing. Yeah. Like, I think that Javier Bardem, or, um, was it Javier Bardem or Benicio Del Toro? It was Javier Bardem. I was right the first time. Why am I second guessing myself? I, don't I think he looks bored as Triton. I think he, I, 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 or, or I think that he looks like he's fighting the harness to, like, swim. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't like a lot of the visuals, like, but I think that Halle Bailey's great. And so people are like, well, you're racist for not liking it for Halle Bailey. And I'm like, no, but, I, that doesn't make any sense because she's the thing I like about the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was tough for, like, uh, uh, Ahsoka because, like, I didn't love Sabine, the actress who played Sabine, her performance. Yeah. And whether or not that's directing or her, that that is totally up for debate. But, like, if I'm like, oh, I don't like Sabine's character, people are like, well, you're racist. And I'm like, no, I it's, promise it's not that. Yeah. And it's the people that are being shitty about it that are so loud that we can't have real conversations about it, which is one of the things I love about this community as a whole, is that, you know, we have a, a, a space for people to, like, be able to have in-depth, intelligent conversations about it without having to worry about, like, like, you know, the trash has already taken itself out. So it allows us to have yeah. more nuanced conversations. I also think by having these opinions in a three-hour show, it's less likely for them to end up elsewhere. Yeah, that's fair. We trust you guys. Don't cancel us. No, it's that, like, if you clip it out and post it, we'd be like, well, go watch the whole thing. And nobody's going to go watch a three-hour show to go find out if we were being racist For or content- not. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't think we have been. I think that everything we've said is fine. Yeah. I don't know how you could take any of this out of context, but... I don't know. Yeah. You never know. Uh, it'll be Attack on Titan all over again. <laughs> what a time. I, uh, Yeah. That was um, fun, Christian guys. Rapper says, we should not assume that having a mixed race couple is just trying to be diverse. Maybe we, including myself, sh- uh, should see those actors were the best actors for the part. It's, it, it's, it, it's not, it's not that I, I have any problem with uh, interracial couples. It is that the, the commercials themselves are, if you watch, if you watch six of them back to back while waiting for the next football play, there, it seems to be a like accepted way to make a commercial right now. Yeah. And you can't have two people of color. Yeah. You gotta relate to the white people as well. Yeah. No, but, 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 but and that's what it feels like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it's just, yeah. it, is, it is a weird, like, consistent melange. And yeah. I'm just kind of like, we, we, you can just have a black couple. Like, I will, I, I will yeah. have the same insurance as two black people. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the insurance. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. It's fascinating. I, yeah. It's a weird world we live in. And like I said, I think we're trying to figure it out. Oh, and we're doing better because of it. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. The pro- okay, but here's my actual problem with it. 
In doing so, all these commercials are non-union. So even though they are hiring people of color, those people of color are not making any fucking money. So fuck Make all of the commercials, commercials anyway union. for not taking union contracts and for cheaping out. Yeah. That's Honestly, how I actually feel about it. Fuck I capitalism. I, you know what? Fuck, fuck all my other arguments. I don't give a fuck about the races of the people in the tra- in the fucking commercials. Pay them union wages and give them residuals. That's the only thing I actually give a shit about. Truly. Why am I even talking about race? Pay people union wages. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Thank you for coming to our TED Talk. Uh, yeah. We anyway. had some great questions. This was fun. Today. Y'all, uh, next week we'll be back with parts one and two of... Well of Ascension. Oh, we should read the beginning Not of Well of Ascension. Oh, do you have it? I do. Oh, okay, I was like, I don't have I it. I have so. a magic device. You have magic? The way I bought these books, um, they're one book. The trilogy. Oh. Yeah, it's just like one. Oh, fascinating. That's the book I'm talking about. I love Later. That. Yeah, it's the Mistborn trilogy. It's all in one book. Interesting. Um. All right. Do you want to read or should I be dyslexic? <laughs> I can do it. All right, heir of the survivor. Mm-hmm. I write these words in steel, for anything not set in metal cannot be trusted. Well, okay. Uh, what? Huh. What? Whoa. What? Wait, let me, we're reading the I'm going to read to you. Okay. Because <clears throat> I've read this already, so I want to see, okay, look it in the camera. And then respond to this as I read it to you. Reacting. The army crept like a dark stain across the horizon. Gross. King Ellen Venture stood motionless upon the Luthadel city wall, looking out at the enemy troops. Around him, ash fell from the sky in fat, lazy flakes. <laughs> it wasn't the burnt white ash that one saw in dead coals. This was a deeper, harsher black ash. The ash mounts had been particularly active lately. Okay. I thought the Ash Mounts might settle down with the Lord Ruler No, it's the deepness. Down with the deepness. The deep is coming back to fuck your octopuses. Hide your fish. Hide your octopuses. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Uh, If you like this video, like, subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave me in comments down below because the algorithm goddess hunger and we must feed her this episode. That algorithm goddess is... Me, I'm hungry. Okay, uh, if you want to follow us on the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Clara Spilari. Tomorrow, we will be back with Dragonlance Session 3. Mm-hmm. The audio will be better. Sorry about last week. I don't know what happened, honestly. We're, We're going to figure it, it out. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the Battle of High Hill has happened. Uh, the citizens of Vogler have been badly Massacred. wounded. Massacred. Mm, yep. And uh, our players are going to have to deal with life in the aftermath of a uh, very confusing betrayal by Gregonis whose head is now on a spike. A javelin. A uh, javelin. To be yeah. specific. Uh, if you want to follow us on the internet, I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Clarice Polaris. Give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Go over to Spotify and answer the question that is associated with this podcast. Do all of the dang things. And if you do not like smut, leave now because we're about to get so or fucking forever. smutty. Hold your peace. We're going to smut it up. I, I we're going to rub we our smut all over this. smuttier than we already have. Uh, yeah, when House Ventures blowing down... One of the Alamancers was burning the fuck out of the cum metal, and he was just jizzing on House Venture. And Ellen walked to the window and, like, opened it to see what's going on and just <laughs> jizz right in the mouth. Why would he have his mouth open when he opened it? Because he was like, door? oh, my God. Oh, oh. No. That's in, That's like a bad porno script. But then he was like, mm, salty. I kind of like it. Yeah, that's a bad porno And this script. is how Ellen Venture realized he was a bisexual. Because he his mouth was open when he opened the door? Because he tasted cum for the first time. He was like, you know what? This is not bad. But tasting cum and being like, this tastes good is not the same as being attracted to men. No, but it like got him through his like mental block of his closet. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was it was the cum that pierced the door to his closet. Sure. Um, sure. Before people leave and run away in droves, um, we're thinking about doing a Nerdy Nightly rebrand look. Uh, everything. <laughs> whoa, 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 you can't I throw said... that in now. You can't throw this. It's too late. I know, no, it's, it's not too late. late. I want, if anyone in, wants to go chat in the Discord about, um, ha- like, like ideas for how the channel is going to look, uh, please, I have no ideas. I have no ideas, and I need your help. We um, cannot go I from me talking about our adventure taking cum in the mouth. I can do whatever being, I like, Also, by the way, how should we rebrand our channel? Smut Corner, obviously. <laughs> Obviously. (laughs) 
Did you know that my hairstylist told me that in Florida there's a raccoon island? Isn't that interesting information? Do you not want to know this information? I will keep it to myself. But if you don't, like, I need to release it when I think of it. Otherwise, like it's Ellen gone. Like, Ellen Venture needs it's to release gone. his bisexuality on the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I am the algorithm goddess, exactly. I do what I want. Can't tell me what to do. Um, I, think that's it. I think that's the end of the show. I, uh, yeah. We'll I, see you all next week for parts one and two of The Will of Ascension. Goodbye. Uh,